of you are doing well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed. Son. Stay blessed. When I heard he had gone to be with the Lord. But one thing Dr. Miles said in his lifetime. He said the greatest tragedy on earth is not death but a life without purpose. I can tell you that he died empty. He released his mindset in books and he set up institutions that will continue his ideologies. I was teaching the School of Ministry students yesterday and um, we're considering a course called Personal Transformation. And we're examining the concept of life and how that it is not so much about the amount of time you spend in your life as it is about the quality of the impact that you make first advancing the purposes of the kingdom and then being a blessing to humanity he consulted for governments one man who was able to create the balance between the secular realm and the spiritual realm he stood as a bridge and blessed both realms without compromise and one of the last messages that he preached before he died was how to die effectively. He taught men how to die. These are men who have cheated death. He encouraged everyone when he went to preach in Kenya. He challenged them to disappoint the grave. Because according to Dr. Miles, the richest place in the earth is not the gold mine in South Africa, nor the oil wells in Nigeria and Iraq, the Middle East, but graveyards where potentials have gone unused. Books that would have changed destinies. Anointings that would have liberated nations. And miles before his death and all through his lifetime it became his conviction. And he said, disappoint the grave. Disappoint the grave. And although it was a tragic event, but he had already prepared to cheat death long. The Bible says, so then teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Can we rise in one minute and pray for Cairo and Carissa, the two children he left behind, well-trained, well-schooled, and pray for the Bahamas Faith Ministries International. Go ahead and pray in one minute. Comfort them, O oh God. Indeed, the world has felt the exiting of a general generals in the faith these are men that hebrews 11 says the earth is not worthy of they came with ideologies that conquered this system they brought babylon to its knees they were prosperous from the earthly point of view they were successful and yet they were relevant pivotal to the the dispensational mandate of the spirit for our time. They cheated death. They reigned in life. These are men who even in the grave speak louder than those who are alive. Bless them. Lord, we thank you for 
giving the earth the gift of Dr. Miles and Ruth and Dr. Richard Pinder and all the membership of the Bahamas Faith Ministries International. We thank you because they took the banner of leadership and the revelation of the kingdom life to the nations. They fought the fight. They ran the race. They poured their lives like drink offerings. We are epistles and testaments and seals of their apostleships. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we pray that you comfort the ministry, comfort the membership. We pray the entire nation of Bahamas, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will bless them. All the sons and the daughters and men and women of God that he left behind, I pray that they will pick up that button and run. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that there will be no discouragement. And Lord, through his life, give us wisdom. That we who are alive will make the most of our life here on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Hallelujah. I want to appreciate um, all those who made last week's service a great time. Uh, we traveled, but God was faithful. I hear the meeting was powerful. The messages were powerful. God bless you. And the Lord increase all of us together in the name of Jesus. God is taking us far. And as always, if we submit to the dealings of the Spirit, the Bible says, surely there is an end. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I want us to consider a very important subject. It's amazing to see that this is the 11th month of the year. And um, a lot has happened in our nation. A lot has happened in our lives. 2014 has truly been... Um, an amazing year for many. It's been a tragic year. And, um, but in all of these things, we thank God. And I want to just share with us something that I consider is very pivotal at this point of our lives. I want to share tonight on the power of hope. Very simple message, but it will bless you. The power of hope. Job chapter 6 verse 11. When we look around our world today and um, we see the complexities of, um, of living in today's world ranging from terrorism to um, corruption and all kinds of insecurity, death, poverty, and all of these vices that have plagued our nation and our lives. And here in Nigeria, we've had our toll of the share of pain. Family members have lost loved ones. And a lot has happened in our lives. Many of us have um, had our expectations dashed at one point or the other. And it's important that we understand the concept of hope. And tonight, I know you will be blessed. When the Lord laid this in my heart, I knew that God was going to speak to us and transform our lives. Job chapter 6, verse 11. Now, when you study theologically the book of Job, um, there's a lot of controversy about the writer of the book of Job and the time, the dispensation with which the book was written. Because... Uh, contextually the book of Job seems to predate the law and all of that. We see activities in the book of Job that happened before the law was given. So we know that um, that must have existed in a dispensation that uh, most fitting would be in between the book of Genesis somewhere around there and theologians generally agree that the book of Job is somewhere there. The writer of the book of Job is unknown because of the character of that book, uh, it is generally agreed that it would take someone who is either not of human origin or who has sustained an intelligence that is out of this world to have 
communicated and articulated the book of Job very, very um, accurately because the book of Job begins telling us about a man, a wealthy man who feared God and eschewed evil. And then the Bible tells us something strange. It gives us the picture of a meeting that was held in the realms of the heavens where Satan also came and uh, discussions were made about this man called Job. And the Lord said, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan said, yes, I have considered him and all of that. But does he serve you just for nothing? You have blessed him. Everything he has touched has prospered. And he said, permit me to take all that you have given him and see if he will not curse you to your face. And whilst that is happening, Job was on the earth realm, not knowing that there was a deliberation that was going on. So it's a very interesting book because... Uh, is one book that tries to answer the question of why bad things happen to good people. Have you heard that kind of question? <laughs> why do bad things happen to good people? Why do Christians die? Why, why do we have terrorists come into a church or a meeting and bomb it? Why? What is the contemplation? What is the answer? There are so many things that happen in our world that creates a lot of question. No wonder we have people who were once Christians and then as a result of these unanswered questions, they become atheists or they turn and begin to mock God and do all kinds of things. So Job was that man. In one day, brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that Job lost his sons, he lost his daughters, he lost his houses, he was into real estate, he was into agriculture, he lost his business. He lost everything. The only thing that Job had was himself, his health, and his wife. Within a span of a few hours, men kept coming to bring reports. I was standing and there were hailstones and this and that happened. All your children are dead. I'm the only one who is alive to come and testify. And while he was trying to manage the psychology that comes, the shock, another news comes. This and that was happening and your cattle and everything. And, and at the end of Job's life, uh, after that news, Job gave glory to God. And that was the end of it. And then, you would think that that would be the end of it. Another meeting was held again. And this time around, Satan comes and God is making boast with Job. And Satan says, well... A man can give anything but his health, his life. Permit me to touch his body and see what happens. And the Lord said, fine. Now that in itself is a big subject of controversy. Why the Lord would permit the devil to go and buffet a man. Hallelujah. And then all of a sudden, Job began to have soil, uh, uh, boils all over his body. And within a short time, that great celebrity, that great man was reduced to ashes. He sat upon ashes and the Bible says dogs will come and lick his sores. He became a subject of embarrassment. Everybody in the city carried their opinion about him. And then the Bible tells us that three men came, really four. And they came and sat together. When they saw Job's predicament, they were shocked. And for seven days, they could not talk. After seven days, they began to analyze. They stretched their intellect from border to border. Searching what principles of life might have been violated to be responsible for this man's predicament. Are you following me now? And at the end of it, they said, Job, all we can find is that you are a sinner. And Job said, be careful. Don't bring a curse upon yourself. And there was a little boy who sat. Elihu said, I wanted to speak, but I was afraid because I was little. He said, this matter is not just the issue of experience. There is a spirit in man. We need the Holy Ghost to help us to be able to analyze what would have been the situation. And after all of those conversations, Job's wife looked at him and said, Mr. Man, you know I've been there. We had all these children with you. I've been a faithful wife. Your situation is pathetic. I pity you. So here is the solution. My recommendation to this situation is that you curse God and die. And Job said, why do you speak like one of these foolish women? Hallelujah. And then a lot of things transpired. At a point, 
Job's humanity, this is the part that, that I want you to get. Job, because you see, Job was a human being. And remember, I did a teaching one time on the four living creatures. How that there are four faces of creatures in the throne. The first is the face of a lion. Hallelujah. And it depicts the believer as a king, as royalty, because we are a reflection of God. So that is the dimension of God that we must permit to be at work in our lives. Mighty king, you rule and you reign. And then the face of a calf, and it symbolizes the servanthood of God, expressed in the person of Jesus, which should be a template for our own lives. How that is not enough just to be a boss and a king, but we must also be servants. Hallelujah. And then the third face is the face of a man, which represents our humanity. And that means no matter how mighty we are, times will come in our lives when our humanities will speak. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible tells us that Jesus was hungry. And he went to the farm to go and get something. In fact, at a point he came to see a fig tree. And then he didn't find food. We see the humanity of Jesus. He wept at funerals. Uh, he was grieved when he saw men doing a lot of things, perverting the temple. There was nothing embarrassing about his humanity. And at times in our lives, sometimes we tend to choke ourselves by refusing to allow our humanities to speak. Let me just stop by to say it's okay to cry. There are times that even great men cry. It's not a symbol of weakness. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And so Job's humanity, he was trying to hold it. He said, no, nobody should, should accuse God. God is faithful. Though he slay me, I will praise him. God is faithful. Don't accuse him. But as the situation became prolonged, the Bible says hope deferred can make the heart weary. Job began to ask questions. Lord, I have defended you in the midst of my pain. Is this how you are going to allow me? I would have gotten married if I compromised. But Lord, I'm getting to 35. What is happening? Every time people wanted to speak against you, I defended you. Even when I did not understand why my situation was happening. When my elder brother died, I defended you. A few months later, my younger brother died. I still defended you. And now someone is sick in my family and may die. Where are you? Times can come in our lives, listen to me, when our humanities will probe God and will demand explanations. The power of hope. Are you getting blessed? And so Job was alone and he began to summon God. In fact, he was angry. And he said, Lord, I'm a righteous man, you know, paraphrasing. I have walked blameless before you. What is all this thing? Why is, I demand you. At a point in time, his aggression began to get stronger. And he said, Lord, come down. I, I schedule a meeting with you. If you are faithful and you are just, if your mercies are new every morning, except I have been lied to all my life, please show up. I need answers. There are times when people have locked themselves not to pray for power, not to pray for grace, but to say, Lord, can you tell me why this happened. Why was my father sacked? I know that my father has never been part of those manipulating a lot of things. Why do I see ungodly people prospering? Yet for every time I serve you, I seem to pay a price for it. Hallelujah. And Job said this. Hmm. He said, what is my strength? This was a communication of a man's frustration. The humanity of Job was speaking. The Bible says he feared God. That means it was not intentional. There are times, brothers and sisters, that life can push you. And you will make some statements sometimes that you will have to go back and say, Lord, I'm sorry. You will make statements. Someone sent me a text. I think he lost his mom. And um, he sent me the text two days before that time. He said, please pray, something is wrong, pray. I, I think a guy or a lady, I don't know exactly who. And then, one morning I was on my way to travel and then I got the text. He said, she's dead. He said, I will never trust God again. 
God is not to be trusted. Now you would easily say, no, don't say that. Sometimes the best way to help people is to keep quiet. If God is not angry at that statement, you should not be. The Bible says he knows that we are dust. Hmm. Hallelujah. And so Job was frustrated. And he spoke. He said, where is my strength that I should hope? And what is my end that I should prolong my life? In other words, is it not better for me to die? What good is it now I'm alive? I can't do anything. I can't make money again. My reputation has been dashed to the ground. Everything I have lived for, I have spent my entire life for, is gone. And all I have is untold pain. I'm lying in the dust. And dogs, dogs who would not even come into my compound have now become my companions and they come to lick my sores. I have become a parable in my own city. And so Job was communicating his frustration. Something happened in chapter 14 of the same Job. Verse 7 and 9, please. Chapter 14, verse 7 and 9. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Chapter 14. Oh, hallelujah. I love the Bible. Job 14, verse 7. stand here. Job 14. You can just stand so that you save time. Hallelujah. Okay. I'd like us to read verse 7. Everyone it was the same Job speaking. Hmm. Listen, listen. Let me tell you something powerful about, about, look at me. Do you know there is a technology that God has put in man? Every time, this is how it works. At first, we are always afraid. There are things we are afraid of. Are you getting my point? There is a way you interact with your fears such that you no longer fear again. So what would have made you cry yesterday, you will sit in the midst of it. And after challenging God and yelling at heaven, right at that point, a song of hope will arise. Sometimes the best way for God to bring us to a place of strength and victory is to expose us to our fears. So that there is nothing else to fear. Hallelujah. Have you seen a man who has had accident and survived? When you shout and say an arm robber is coming, he will still be moving. Lord, you are so good. You are worthy of all my praise. While everybody is panicking, he just says, man, I've seen too much. If he's dead, I would have died. Are you getting my point? There are men who have cheated the devil with their testimonies. They've gone through too much. When the ministry started, there are certain things that would have to be careful about. But right now, ah, there are things you go through in life, you no longer get afraid. Remember when some of you were afraid of carryover? In the name of Jesus, I bind. It will never happen. And you went to the board. You saw it once. You saw it twice. The third time, you just said, Lord, you are faithful. Now you just come and check. What's the CGPA? 2.87. I give you all the glory. And you are comforting somebody who said it dropped from 3.5 to 3.4. And you are saying, may God bless you. Take it easy. You say, can you imagine? God, why did you do this? And you are watching. A time comes when you've gone through too much pain. Your pain suddenly becomes a weapon. It no longer becomes a thing of embarrassment. You look down and it becomes your weapon of victory. And Job in chapter 6 made a statement. He said, I'm dying. What is all this? Heaven was silent. He went through the pain after insulting God. I'm sure he told himself, I'm sorry. Told his wife, I'm sorry. And said, look. And then he said this. Hallelujah. He said, for there is hope for a tree. Who is God speaking to tonight? 
there is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, that's the part I like. It didn't say if it be rooted out. He said if it be cut down because the root is still there. The miracle is not in what you have lost. It's in what you have left. He said there is hope for a tree. God is speaking a powerful message to someone tonight. No matter what you have lost, God is the reason why you did not lose everything. Mm. You lost your first class status, but you are still a student. You lost your family members, but you are still alive. They amputated one leg, but you are still breathing. He said there is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, that it will what? It will sprout again. Ha! The Bible says rejoice not over me, my enemies. He said for when I fall, when you are about to sit together and make a funeral, you will see me arise again. He said rejoice not over me. They that have laughed at my family, they that have looked at them and said at 31 nobody has gone to school. He said rejoice not, there is hope. That there are expectations that you have and now it's November. The admission list came out and your name was not there. Yet in a dream, you kept seeing that you got the admission. He said there is hope for a tree. The tragedy is that the tree can be cut down but not rooted out. He said, and that the tender branch thereof will not see. Everybody say there is hope. What is hope? Let's define hope very quickly. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new. And I will follow you forward. That's what the Lord is doing in someone's life and someone's family tonight. You make all things new, yes, you make all things new, and I will follow you forward. One more time, let's sing it as a prophecy for our lives and destinies. Come on now. You make all things new, yes. Definition number one. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. First definition. Let's hurry up. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a thing to happen. In other words, is that feeling, that expectancy you have that there's something I expect to happen in my life. And so you keep that fire. You keep that expectation. It's called hope. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. Number two. Hope is a firm assurance. A firm assurance and a belief that things and circumstances will be better in the future. I'll take it again. Hope is a firm assurance and a belief that things and circumstances will be better in the future. Powerful definition. The assurance, firm assurance. So in the first definition, we see that hope is expectation. The second definition, faith is firm assurance. The certainty that you know that it will not end like this. Although for now, things may be unclear. Although for now, things may be unknown. But you have an assurance. I don't know how it will happen. I don't know when it will happen. But I know it will happen. 
The firm assurance. Number three. I'll give you three definitions. Number three. Hope is an optimistic attitude. Optimistic attitude of mind. An optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation. Keep writing. It's an optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation of positive outcomes. Based on an expectation of positive outcomes related to events and circumstances in one's life or the world at large. An optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation of positive outcomes related to events and circumstances in one's life. Now, there are some key words that I want us to look at. When you talk about hope, the first thing you talk about is expectation. Say expectation. So, I expect that certain things will happen. I may not know how they will happen. I may not know when they will happen. I don't even know where they will happen. But I know that they will happen. Number two, firm assurance. That certainty. That I know, that I know, that I know. That although it's been seven years and we've not been able to have a child, we know that we are going to die as parents. I know against all odds, against all medical reports, that I know, that I know, that I know, that I may be SS now, but one thing I know is that when I'll be going to be with the Lord, that genotype must change. I may not know which miracle service will bring the miracle. But I have a firm assurance. And then number three is an attitude of optimism. I keep my spirit high because I know that things will change. I may not see it. It may not look like it as at now. The job has not come. I've been a graduate for 10 years. No job. I've been a man of God for 20 years and there are just 20 members and I love God sincerely. The ministry is not growing. Finance is not coming. Influence is not increasing. Nothing is happening. Hallelujah. I'm a lady. I've kept myself and I love the Lord. I told God I wanted to marry at 23. I'm 33. It's 10 years of waiting. Nothing has happened. He said, it's an attitude of optimism. Keeping your spirit high. Knowing you are not wasting your time. Very important. Why do we need hope? Very quickly. Why do we need hope? Why do we need to talk about the subject of hope? Why do we really need hope? Is it so important a subject to be talked about? Number one. I wrote here that. In a world full of uncertainties, failures, and darkness, hope gives us the strength to continue. In a world full of uncertainties, failures, and darkness, hope gives us the strength to continue. So the first reason why we need hope is because it supplies for us the strength. It gives us the staying power, the impetus to keep going. Even when there is no human reason to keep moving. Hallelujah. Why should I keep serving the Lord? When there are all kinds of things happening. Why should I keep hoping on God? When believers seem to be dying around like chickens in our nation. Why should I keep being optimistic? When it's been years and decades, there's not been any graduates in our family. In a world that is full of uncertainties. Hallelujah. Uncertainties. For instance, the, the, doc, the, the death of Dr. Miles Munro raised a lot of questions around people. 
you know, because people knew how very confident he was about the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. One of our brothers in the technical department called me this evening to tell me he lost his brother. He just got a report that he lost his brother. Our sister in the media last week, Selena, lost her mom. And the mom was coming from the church. She finished service on her way to go home and a bike carried her. She had an accident, had sustained some internal injuries and um, by the next day, she gave up. And while she died, they were praying. I've seen a lot of people who minutes before people died, they were praying in tongues. In fact, some who died, died speaking in tongues or praying uncertainties there are times when no matter how theologically sound you are you will be faced with realities that you may not be able to answer people why is this happening hallelujah imagine that that celebrity called Jesus imagine a man who conquered death will you ever think that he would die after bringing dead people back to life you would think even if they wanted to kill him it was based on that that Peter took a knife to cut Malchus' ear because he said, you don't know who you are trying. And Jesus now gave himself. And he said, Jesus, I don't understand. What is going on here? Somebody tell me I'm dreaming. What is Jesus doing? Wake up. Are you sleeping? You are handing yourself, donating yourself to be killed. And Jesus said exactly that. And Peter said, come on now. So you fooled us all this while. Where is the jazz you've been using? So you are not really mighty. Ah, I knew it. Something in my spirit told me there was more to this man. And he ran away. But he did not know that there is hope for a tree. The Bible likens men to trees. He said, he shall be like a tree. So he said, there is hope for a tree. Jesus died, but he died for only 72 hours. When men were busy discussing his death, he was already alive. Ay -ay 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 -ay. Don't talk about my death when I'm already alive. We love talking about death. Two men in Emmaus were discussing the death, whereas the expiry time was only 72 hours. Did you know that this phase of your life that is full of stories is only a comma in the long span of the picture that is characterized by unending victory? It's been five years, but God has given you 80 years to prove to the devil he's alive. Hmm. There is hope for a tree. A time came, Peter was locked in prison. Now he understood. I'm sure in prison, Peter will be saying, yeah, so this is what happened to Jesus. After doing great and mighty things, terrible things in righteousness, they, they watched the Holy Spirit come upon the church to begin a new dispensation. And now they locked him. James was in the prison. They said, don't worry, we know James. James is a powerful man. And later they just heard James has been beheaded. They said, you mean the knife entered? He died? He said, James is dead. All of a sudden there was panic. They said, my goodness, we thought the anointing was going to speak for James. Uncertainties. And now they caught Peter. I'm sure Peter concluded because the Bible does not record that when they came, they met him praying. He was sleeping. Peter said, well, for me to live is Christ. To die is gain. Whatever happens, I will go and meet Jesus Christ. But he did not know. See, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If it is not your time, you remain immortal. Are you hearing what I'm saying? An angel came. And the Bible says the chains just fell by themselves. And he let Peter out. Same thing with Paul. Paul was used to dying. He testified. He would die immediately. They leave his spirit to just enter his body and you get up and find somewhere and rest and the job continues. Strange man. They would take reports that he's dead and they'll hear that he's in another city. Paul. Very strange man. To an extent that some men vowed that they will not eat. Have you read that in your Bible? They say we won't eat until this man dies to our supervision. We must make sure he's dead. I don't know what they did with their lives because Paul lived very long. When he went to that island called Melita, Paul rested there. There was peace and tranquility for some time. 
in a world full of uncertainty, in a world full of failure, in a world full of darkness, hope gives us the strength to continue. It gives us the energy to keep on moving. Still the same point. In life, in ministry, in business, in your marriage, in your academics. In other words, hope is the anchor that keeps us standing fast through the storms of life. Just like the anchor keeps the ship so that the waves will not take you too far. Hope is that anchor. Hope is that anchor that holds your life. When the boisterous storms of uncertainties in life come and buffet you like the house that is built upon the rock, sometimes it may be shaken, but hope will keep you alive. Number two, why do we need hope? Hope is one of the pillars upon which faith is built. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Hope is one of the pillars upon which faith is built. Without the revelation of hope, there cannot be faith. The Bible says, now faith is, Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is, the what? The confident assurance of the things hoped for. So we must first hope for them. Speaking about Abraham, they said, who against all hope believed in hope? Against all hope, Romans chapter 4. Against all hope believed in hope. So hope is the pillar. One of the pillars upon which faith stands. And very quickly, I'm rushing so that we'll get to where I'm going to dwell for tonight. There are two dimensions of hope as taught in the Bible. Two dimensions of hope as taught in the Bible. Number one is what the Bible calls the blessed hope. The blessed hope. Titus chapter 2 verse 13 please. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. The blessed hope. It talks about hope that is beyond this earthly life. That's the first and the ultimate hope. Please listen to me tonight. Hope that is beyond this earthly life. Hope that is beyond the grave. The first dimension of hope that the Bible speaks to us about is what it calls the blessed hope. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. He said, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and of our Savior Jesus Christ. So the first hope that must keep us going in life, that must keep us optimistic in life, that must keep us assured in life is what the Bible calls the blessed hope. That assurance that no matter what happens, even if this body is destroyed, there is a blessed hope. Are you getting what I'm saying? Confident assurance. That the grave is not the end of life. That in spite of all of the poverty and the terrorism and whatever it is, there is an assurance the Bible calls it the blessed hope. And listen, every other manifestation of hope you have in your life is useless until this is in place. Because this is hope beyond the earthly realm. Let me tell you something. There is life beyond this place. We were talking very passionately with the school of ministry students yesterday and we were really considering the subject of life. We were actually examining the biblical view of success and fulfillment. And I was sharing with them a few things. If your hope does not transcend beyond this earthly realm, listen to me, then of all men, you are most miserable. The Bible says, I saw the grave give up the dead. Now, all this did not happen in the earth. 
life was over for them. A time where those who had the blessed hope will rejoice. The sea gave up the dead. The grave gave up the dead. All of the people. And he said, I saw the dead stand before God. And he said, great and those who were great and small. I saw standing before God senators. And I saw carpenters. I saw vice chancellors and professors. And I saw villagers. I saw people who could not get food to eat. And I saw those who their dogs could eat the food of royalty. He said they all stood before God. And the moment of truth came. Books were open. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Books were open. And another book was open. He said every man was judged according to the writings of that book. And he said whosoever's name. Ah, I like the Bible. No bribery. No political party. Whosoever's name was not found. You will carry your flag. Carry your, your, your senatorial district. Carry whatever it is to the lake of fire. Carry your prestige and your accolades. Listen to me. When you stand from the realm of the spirit and you look at the earth realm, it looks like a vapor. That's how it looks like. Anyone who has had a, a true visionary encounter and you have been given the privilege to look at earth, you know how you look at the cloud. The earth is truly like a mirage compared to spiritual realities. Therefore, we must have that blessed hope that I know that as I'm going about my business, I know that as I'm doing whatever I'm doing, thank God for breakthrough, thank God for whatever, but I am assured that if I get out in the morning and for any reason under the sun I do not re return, don't doubt where I am. I've gone to a place of rest. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must convince yourself, some of you are already afraid, there's no need being afraid of what must happen. Come to terms with it and win the war. Every time you begin, the greatest enemy of mankind as we know, they ask the wisest man, you know, societally speaking, he's considered to be the wisest man in the earth. They ask him what is the greatest problem of mankind. He said he's shocked that the government have not started talking about it. He said the fact that everybody will die. He said it's a very serious issue. We should forget about the issue of politics and oil and tackle this issue that men will die. You see that he's truly wise, right? He said, look at, we, we get up and we do the things that we do and there is one common denominator. Death. Millionaires have died in this country. Their money could not save them. Is that true? Men of God have died in this country. Habalists have died in this country. Children have died in this country. People have lost babies in the hospital. People have died 100 years plus. It makes no difference. Hear me. There is a blessed hope. There is a blessed hope. Everybody say blessed hope. This is the greatest consolation any man can have. Goodbye world. I'm staying no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures of sin I'm staying no longer with you I've made up my mind To go God's way The rest of my life I've made up my mind To go God's way The rest of my life A day will come Let me tell you Every arrogant man in this earth Must come to his knees Oh yes, absolutely. There are men who live like they are gods of themselves. But my Bible says the earth is the Lord's. He said, once have I spoken and twice have we heard. All power does not belong to any political party. It does not belong to any terrorist group. There is a God that sits upon the circles of the earth. He may look powerless now, but a day will come he will show his might like the brightness of the sun. And only those... Who have this blessed hope. Get five points without this blessed hope. You are nothing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Marry the finest woman in the world. 
the most handsome and the wealthiest man in the world without this blessed hope you are nothing listen do charity have a big ministry be on air organize crusades if you wish if you do not have this blessed hope in five minutes when your life evaporates like a vapor you have wasted your life are you hearing what i'm saying we consider everything else in our life but we do not pay attention to this blessed hope many of us it is a shame that for many pastors this is not even a theme of our messages again i'm going to talk about other aspects and we're going to pray and speak over ourselves but first and foremost i owe a responsibility and i told god our primary assignment as a ministry, we have four mandates from God. Number one is massive salvation of souls. i rather leave somebody, listen, listen, look at what Jesus said to somebody who was lying down. He said, your sins be forgiven. And the people said, what are you saying? For many of us, that is inferior to miracles. Hallelujah. But he said, your sins be forgiven. In other words, what you need is a blessed hope. You need something higher than this. The thief on the cross, the other ones, you know, he began to harass Jesus and talk and he was unrepentant even on the cross. And the other one said, uh -uh, shut your mouth. We are getting a recompense for what we have done. We are armed robbers. They caught us. They are, they are hanging us on the cross because we stole. But this man is innocent and Jesus looked at him and said, this day, my goodness, my go all his life of misery, became useful by one pronunciation to release him. Can you imagine that? Barabbas stood near the king of kings, the one who could give him blessed hope, yet he did not have it. Judas Iscariot was the treasurer of the custodian of this blessed hope, yet he did not receive it. He committed suicide and went to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He went and bought a field with the money and killed himself. The blessed hope. Many times I think about my life and I'm telling you I live a very happy life. One of the reasons why I don't worry in my life is because I know that every other thing on earth will only happen if I'm alive. Is that true? The subject of CGPA is over when you go to be with the Lord. If the trumpet sounds now, okay, let me not talk about death. Since you are afraid of death, the trumpet will still sound. The Bible talks about his appearing. The trumpet sounds. Now, I guarantee you I'm out of this place. You just see this mic on the floor. You can come and carry it if you think that what we're saying is joke. Because there are people here who are hearing this and will just laugh. I remember writing a letter to some of my friends and classmates years ago, secondary school classmates, and one of my friends he studied theater art. He said he saw my Rapture Entertainment paper, Rapture Entertainment newsletter. He said he, he saw it, it got to him. I said, don't worry. It will be a newsletter indeed by the time we check out of this place. Brothers and sisters, there is an event called Rapture. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is not a prophetic event. It is a real event. It will happen. Where human beings will exit this earth, the greatest shock of humanity will happen then. So I live my life with eternity in view. Yes, I want to be blessed financially. Yes, I want ministry to expand. Yet I want this and that to happen. But brothers and sisters, beyond that, that only becomes a worthy pursuit when you know that your eternal security is there. Let me tell you the truth. Satan's ultimate goal is not to make you poor. If that's all his goal, then he has insulted himself. Are you getting what I'm saying? Satan's ultimate goal is not to put curses and spells and witches and wizards. No, that's not Satan's ultimate goal. His ultimate goal is to make sure that number one he terminates the possibility of the blessed hope in your life when he finds out that there is no room you are already lost then he will try to deal with you from the earth realm so you can fraternize with him to secure the fact that you will not make it hallelujah 
Imagine the nightmare Satan lives with, knowing he has been doomed forever. There is no opportunity for salvation. So every morning I wake up, Satan is afraid. Because the more we advance the kingdom, the more his time of doom comes near. He said, have you come to destroy us before our time? There is a time that is their own. It's for them. It has been earmarked. It's not a secret. They know it. That a dispensation will come where death, hell, and the grave will be casted into the lake of fire. The Bible calls it the second death. That is when officially the meter of eternity will start reading. Satan is aware. Satan is aware. That's why the moment you declare the name of the Lord and you commit your life to bringing people into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have declared war on the gates of hell. There are people right here. Listen, I will never make assumptions. There are people here, you are looking at me. You know right now that if the trumpet sounds, the sincere truth is that you do not have this blessed hope. There is no guessing it, brothers and sisters. Uh, I can't remember exactly when I got born again. I think I just know that I love God. Look at me. Come. Madam, are you married? Yes. When? Uh, Kai. When exactly was I married? I just know that somehow, somehow, this man used to stroll around and now we have many children. Are you married? Answer me, are you married? People celebrate their wedding anniversaries with joy. True or false? We are 20 years in marriage and they smile. They say, for these 20 years, God has been faithful. Let me tell you something. There are many believers deceiving themselves. They do not have one, what the Bible calls the assurance of salvation. And number two, they are not taking it seriously. We think about money and every other thing aside from the blessed hope. But tonight... The Lord wants to make all things new. I'm going to take an altar call. I just feel I should stop here and let's take a powerful altar call right now to the shame of the devil. Hallelujah. Listen. There is no playing games, brothers and sisters. Whether you are poor or rich. Right now in the church, they say don't threaten people. Don't teach about anything rapture. Just give them a good reason. <laughs> Whether you feel threatened or not, let me tell you the truth. It will happen. Jesus is coming soon. Everything that needs to happen for him to come has happened. The final sign, the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom is what we are doing right now. And at every moment, his majesty can come. If you are afraid of the coming of Jesus Christ, it's because you are going to hell. It should be a thing we should rejoice about. And say, Lord, finally, an end comes to this life of misery. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everyone rise on your feet. We are going to take this altar call right now. Please, let this be a solemn moment. I am, I am, I am dead serious with what is happening right now. Hallelujah. There are people here who are saying, man of God, I love the Lord. I have served the Lord. Some of you may even be preachers. But you are saying sincerely, I am not sure that that blessed hope, there is a condition for it to happen. The Bible says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's not anything that you have to do on your part. You just receive the free gift of salvation. The Bible says, for all have sinned. All have sinned. There's nothing embarrassing about realizing that you probably have not received the gift of salvation. He said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the Bible says, for God so loved the world. He gave his one and only begotten son. He said, whosoever, no selection, shall believe in him. Believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. There are people here. Some of you, you have been around church. You, you do a lot of spiritual things. And you have believed that that is a justification. 
We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. And our hope and all our pains will be no more. We will stand and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you forevermore. Oh, this is the destiny of the church. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. And our hope and all our fears will be no more. And we will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you evermore. Right now, as we sing this song, wherever you are, inside and outside, you need to come and surrender to Jesus. I like you to passionately, like a man running away from fire, find your way to the front right now. Find your way to the front right now. Find your way to the front right now. The moment we raise this song, I'd like you to come. Mean business with him. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. All our pain and all our fears will be no more. Don't sit back deceiving yourself. We will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you forevermore. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. We will and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you forevermore. For the last time now, we will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. All our pain and all our fears will be no more. Stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you forevermore. We will worship and adore you forevermore. The saints will see him, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lamb. That's what we will sing at his feet. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. Oh, when this life is over, that's our song. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. They that have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Holy, holy, holy. Standing, receiving all kinds of crowns of glory. Standing at his majesty's where he will tell us, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. We'll sing holy. I will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. All our pain and all our fears will be no more. I know this, that I will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore forever. Listen, even if you live to 120 years. Hear me? 
you're not going to die young don't be afraid this is not a funeral service we have a covenant of life and prosperity are you hearing what i'm saying but i'm telling you even if you live 200 years one of the interesting things in the bible is that they will mention a very long age of a man and then they will say and he died he still died some of you are standing and you are crying i tell you the truth there is nothing to be ashamed of tonight can be that night i don't care what you have done i don't care what there are some of us who need to rededicate our lives i just sense that there are still one or two people that need to join them and say for me i'm rededicating it i'm saying lord i surrender everything i've been stubborn towards the will and the purposes of god you are part of that inside and outside join them quickly as i pray for you thank you for giving to the lord I am a light that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so. Hallelujah. Those of us in front here, in one minute, I'd like you to talk to the lover of your soul talk to him he died for you the bible says while we were yet sinners as you pray i want you to think about your life in one minute and tell yourself it's over enough of playing games and for all of us who are standing don't think because you are standing it means you should not reflect please in one minute i'd like everybody to reflect on your life am i living my life in a way that if i see it being replayed I will be glad I live that way. Am I living my life in a way that if I am to watch myself in heaven, I will say, thank you, Jesus. I spent my life on the purposes of the kingdom. Lift your voice and pray. This is serious business tonight. This is why Jesus shed his blood. Please, don't you think we are playing games tonight? This is a very serious issue. If you're under the sound of my voice, you should be thinking about your life very deeply and seriously. No man will stand for you on that day. There is no advocate, no pastor, no prophet, no apostle. He said, books were open. I saw the dead, both small and great. Let what you are hearing tonight not stand against you in the day of judgment. pray those of you in front pray jesus you died for me jesus you died for me i return to you now i return to you jesus son of god i believe in you i believe in you that's what you should be saying those of you kneeling down in front jesus son of god i believe in you i believe in you just the voices i like you to hush it from the depths of your heart Said, whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have life everlasting whosoever believes in him hallelujah those of you in front i'd like you to say after me from the depth of your heart i never forget this day some of you are rededicating yourself some of you are truly surrendering all say after me lord jesus i surrender every aspect of my life completely to you I make you Lord of my life I have run away from you for too long but tonight like a prodigal child I return home 
to you the lover of my soul I return to you wash me with your blood cleanse me make me new give me a new beginning write my name in the Lamb's book of life that when this life is over I will have that blessed hope I declare today that I willingly consciously make Jesus Lord of my life I'm willing to live by your word in the name of Jesus father what a privilege what a privilege I ask you in the name of your son Jesus Christ that the grace for a new beginning give them in the name of Jesus for many of them they have been running like a deer that pants for the water and tonight they have found salvation I ask that this will be a genuine desire that on that day when we all stand we will see them I bless you I declare your sins forgiven I declare that your name is in the Lamb's book of life and I declare that Jesus is Lord of your life from tonight grace to walk in righteousness I cut you away from any lifestyle that is not consistent with the character of the kingdom in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ a big congratulations to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah please I'd like you to follow the ushers in one minute they'll just have your details and you return back to your seat hallelujah hallelujah for those of us standing before we continue there's one more aspect that I must touch and then we'll pray in one minute I'd like you to pray and say Lord you have found me keep me keep me go ahead and pray keep me keep me pray Lord you have found me keep me oh yes now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless now unto him who is able to keep you from falling in the midst of the pressures and the challenges of life keep me keep me from falling it says and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom thine is the power and thine is the glory keep me from falling that I will serve you all my life that I will serve you all my life hallelujah hallelujah God bless you please sit down let's finish up so there are two dimensions of hope the first is the blessed hope and according to Titus chapter 2 verse 13 the blessed hope talks about the return of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fact that we'll be spending eternity with him in a place of absolute rest. I wrote a song maybe 10, 13 years ago. The coming of the Lord is near and I can hear the drown of the trumpet so loud. When the dead in Christ shall rise again And we who are alive Will be caught up in glory To a place of rest Called heaven, called paradise And there we will rejoice forever remember writing that song was my communication I've taken God serious all my life and I want to encourage us stay with God stay with God a time will come where we will be in a place of absolute rest and peace and love forever where there will be no wars no terrorism no hunger no issue of jam and wayek no issue of corruption and death and sickness and 
that is our blessed hope. Hallelujah. Absolutely. The second aspect of hope, we'll deal with that now. When your eternity is secured, you can deal with the quality of your life here on earth. And that's what we want to deal with very quickly. The fact that our ultimate hope is beyond this life. It's not a guarantee that we should allow the devil to buffet our lives here in the earth realm. The Bible says, having the promise of this life, uh, having the promise, uh, how did he put it now? We're going to get to that scripture. First Timothy, I, I think, we'll get there, we'll get there. Let me just skip it. The second dimension of hope is what the Bible calls hope in this life. Hope in this life. So our hope is not just in heaven alone. We have hope even in this life. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. First Timothy media if you can help us. Everyone say hope in this life. Yes. If you are supposed to live 90 years old and you are 25 years now or 30 years, how many more years do you have? At least 60 or 65 years. You don't want it to be 65 years of hopelessness and misery. Hallelujah. So we must have hope even in this life. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. He said, but bodily exercise profited little. For bodily exercise profited little. But godliness is profitable to all things. He said, having the promise and expectation of the life that now is, huh? and then that which is to come. So, there is a promise of the quality of life that now is. Jesus speaking to the, to the disciples said, no man who has left father or mother or land houses for my sake and for the kingdom's he said, but he will receive in this life. This and that and that and then in the life to come, life everlasting. There are issues in our life today that we are discouraged about and we must sustain the grace to deal with it. Praise the Lord. We need hope in this life to be able to achieve our goals, to be able to push through the walls of limitations, to be able to overcome challenges and obstacles and to triumph over circumstances. I'll take it again. We need hope in this life so that we can achieve our goals. We can push through the walls of limitations. We can overcome challenges and obstacles and finally triumph over circumstances. These are the two dimensions of hope. One is the blessed hope at the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the other is the hope we have that assures us of victory here and now. Praise the Lord. Now very quickly. What is the basis for hope? What is the biblical basis for hope? Let's start with our blessed hope. That means what is the foundation, what is the assurance, what is the condition, what is the basis on which we have our hope. The blessed hope. What gives us assurance that what we call blessed hope is not a lie? What gives us that assurance that we will partake of it? Number one is the sacrificial and the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ. The first basis for our blessed hope, hope beyond this life, is the sacrificial and the substitutionary work of the Lord Jesus Christ that has given us access to eternal life and peace with God. Romans chapter 6 from verse 23. So the basis for my spending eternity with God, the basis for that hope that I have is the fact that Jesus died. The sacrificial and the substitutionary work of the Lord Jesus Christ 
that today has granted me access to eternal life and peace with God through the blood of Jesus. Romans chapter 6 from verse 23. Hallelujah. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And that eternal life comes through the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. So based on the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ, it gives me a basis for having that blessed hope. That truly, on account of what Christ has done, I will be able to stand blameless before the throne. Hallelujah. Number two, what gives us the basis for the blessed hope is the words and the prophecies in the Bible, which we consider to be true. Revelations 21 verse 1 to 5. Let's rush, please. Two major reasons why we have assurance that this blessed hope is true. Number one is that Jesus died and he has given us access. Number two is that the concept of this blessed hope has been written in the Bible and we believe it to be true. I saw a new heaven, Revelation 21. This was the revelation that was given to John the Apostle in the Isle of Patmos. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So John tells us, based on the prophecy in the book, that there was truly a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. Verse 2. And I, John, saw it. Are you seeing that now? John saw it. So he's not telling us what an angel told him. John saw it. So it gives us the basis of assurance. I saw the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Verse 4. We're reading to five and God shall wipe away their tears you see where we got the song that we're singing he shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away and God himself tells us in verse 5 he said and he that sat on the throne not a delegate he said behold I make all things new. And he said, Right, for these words are true and faithful. So we can believe it. God himself endorsed it. That the concept of this blessed hope against all scientific odds is true. Write it. He said, Document it so that those who will read this prophecy will know that there is truly a blessed hope. Are you blessed? So the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ gives us the basis for our blessed hope. Hallelujah. And then the prophecies of the Bible given and endorsed by God himself further gives us an assurance. So that is the, the, the basis for our blessed hope. What is the basis for our hope in this life then? The second dimension. What gives us assurance that the cancer will die what gives us assurance that you will build the house what gives us assurance that in spite of all of the delays and the frustration in your life you will emerge a champion what gives you assurance that the ministry that looks small today would be of global impact i call them the attributes of god there are three attributes of god that gives us confidence and gives us hope in this life. The first attribute of God that gives us hope in this life is his creative ability. The first attribute of God that becomes the basis for our hope in this life is his creative ability. His ability to make something out of nothing gives us hope. So no matter how hopeless my life is, when I look at that attribute of God, that it is still within his power to make something with no raw material, I know that there is hope for me. So when God says he can change my story, 
I can believe in and I'm hold on to that is attribute. I preached a message, uh, I think it was last year, faith in the faithfulness of God. You can have faith in the attributes of God. I can have faith in the creative ability of God. And the Bible is full of this. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, just write it, we may not project it. The Bible says, verse 2, the earth was dark and void and formless. That was a hopeless situation. But then we see the creative power of God. He said, and Elohim said, light be. All of a sudden, he began to recreate the earth out of nothing. If God can recreate the earth out of nothing, it means he can recreate my life no matter what is missing. So that revelation gives me hope to hold on to him. The attribute of God, his creative attributes. In John chapter 6 from verse 1 to 14, John chapter 6 from verse 1 to 14, specifically from verse 9 to 12, the entire text of five loaves and two fish, we see the creative ability of God at work. 5,000 men aside women and children, they were hungry. And Andrew saw a young lad having five loaves and two fish. And they brought it to Jesus. And Jesus said, no problem. It's not a hopeless situation when I am there. It is within my power to create. The Bible says he lifted it and he gave thanks. All of a sudden, we saw creation at work again. Hallelujah. Everyone say, God has creative power. Because you see, for many of us, it is difficult to see how God will step in and change your situation. Because the raw material you know to produce that change has been lost. Are you getting my point? How can I have hope that I will give birth to a child when the womb that should, should keep the child has been removed? Are you getting my point? Maybe because of fibroid or something, the womb was, it was removed. I saw it. I know it's gone. Can I still have hope? The creator. The creator. Hallelujah. He said, all I need is your cooperation. The creator. The one who can make... Nothing is still a raw material for him. Everyone say, God has creative ability. So there is hope for my life. I think it was here we had a testimony about someone who jam came out. Remember that jam? And there was 100 and something. Hallelujah. 100 and something. And I think after one of the miracle services or so, the person went back to check the jam, confirmed he had 200 and something. The creator. See, let me tell you, the attributes of God represent the possibilities in him. And the one you believe is the one that can work for you. All of the multifaceted attributes of God represent the possibilities in him. I believe every part of him. I believe everything that he can do. So, the attributes of God. The first is his creative ability. It gives us the basis to have hope in this life. Number two is God's restorative ability. His ability to restore. What does it mean to restore? To bring back to life that which is dead. To make perfect that which is imperfect and to bring back lost opportunities God is able to do that God is able to do that there is an attribute of God that can restore things so it gives us hope that even when our situations look hopeless when God steps in he can restore in Ezekiel chapter 37 from verse 1 to 7 just write it just write it for time's sake. Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 7. Ezekiel said that he took me in the spirit of the Lord to a, a valley full of dry bones. Hallelujah. The prophet of God was taken to a valley. The Bible says there were very many and the bones were very dry. Meaning they had been there in a long time. And he says, son of man, can these bones live again? And the prophet said, only thou knowest. And he said, prophesy. Speak to these bones. Hear ye the word of the Lord. And all of a sudden, the Bible says, at the prophet's word, bones began to be joined to bones. I'd like you to say, God can restore. Say it, God can restore. 
God can bring back to life that which is dead in my life. God can make perfect that which is imperfect in my life. And God can restore lost opportunities in my life. Oh yes. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Arise. Everything that was lost can be restored. I'd like you to say hallelujah. In John chapter 11, the entire text is from verse 1 to 44. But the part that concerns us is 17 to 27 and 39 to 44. Don't project it because of time. It talks about the story of a man called Lazarus in a place called Bethany. The Bible tells us that Lazarus, one who was greatly beloved of Jesus Christ, Jesus loved him so much. A report got to Jesus and they said, Lazarus whom you love is sick. And Jesus said, don't worry. The sickness is not unto death. Meaning the situation would not be worse than it already is. And when the master speaks, you believe him. But then they returned. And Jesus told them, let's go to our brother Lazarus for he sleepeth. And they said, ah, if he sleepeth, it's good for him. And then he came directly. He said, our brother Lazarus is dead. Four days. And the restorer, he was on his way coming. And when Mary saw him, she was angry. She was grieved. And they said, Master, if you had been here, Lazarus would not have died. He said, but now I know that it's not late. And Jesus said, Lazarus, your brother will arise. There will be restoration. He said, I know, Lazarus, I know you have already been speaking about the blessed hope. I know. And Jesus said, do you not know that I am the resurrection? That means it's not an event. It's a personality. It can happen now for you. I am the resurrection and I am the life. And he looked at a stone. Men had concluded. And he said, roll away the stone. Let's review that case. For 10 years, your father's promotion has been delayed. But he said, roll away the stone. You take a step of faith. Show me that you have hope by going to roll away the stone. I will roll it for you. Roll it. If you want me to visit that case, roll away the stone. And they rolled away the stone. And Jesus stood. And in chapter 35, the Bible says, and Jesus wept. He had so much compassion. And he said, Father, I thank you because you hear me always. And I don't say this because I'm doubting you, paraphrasing, but so that these people will know. And he echoed a voice, the resurrection and the life. He sent a signal that rattled Hades, the place of dead, the dead people. And he said, Lazarus, you know why he mentioned Lazarus' name? If he just said, come forth, every dead person would have come to life. And so he mentioned the one he wanted to come. He sent a word, and that word came, passed through the astral realm, and went, and the word like a meter, and it saw the spirit of Lazarus, and he said, the master calleth. That's how rapture will happen. The blast of the trumpet will rattle through the gates of the spirit. And the doors of life will open. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And all of a sudden, they saw a man coming out. And he said, take off those grave clothes. Oh, God can restore. Who asks you to close those chapters in your life? Am I speaking to you? Who asks you to close the chapters? There are people who do not even confront certain issues again because they have closed it. But tonight the Lord is saying, open it up. I want to visit it. I want to visit it. I want to visit it. I gave you a prophetic word, but it is November right now. Can that word still come to pass? Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Listen, I have learned from experience and I have learned in my life that all we need to do, listen, the manifestation of your miracle does not take time. 
it is the process of preparation that takes time. For about 12 years, Joseph was being trained. But in one night, he slept a prisoner and woke up a prime minister. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In one night, Hadassah, Esther, for one year, she kept preparing. Listen, the fact that you are going through a period of pruning, a period of waiting does not mean God is not moving. If you think he's too slow, you will want to move faster than him and you will complicate your journey. Wait. In one night, God changed the story of a nation. The prophet said, by this time tomorrow, even if he said by this time next year, it will be fair enough. But he said tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. Someone is sitting here tonight. By tomorrow night, you will sit down with your hand on your head and you'll be saying, my Lord, I didn't know I was this close. I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see it. That's the testimony of many people now. Listen, you are you have come so close you've been enduring for years but now that you are about to break open the gates of destiny many of us want to turn back i want you to know that the restoration ability of god is still in force are you hearing what i'm saying i almost can't go I was right at the edge of a breakthrough, but couldn't see. Oh, listen, let me tell you something. I trust the Lord. Something happened to us, a very interesting story. I won't give you all the details. Happened to us at the airport when we were traveling. Some things came up. There were lots of complications, and it was going to affect our tickets and all of that. And, you know, we were a bit concerned because I think there was issue of overbooking and so on and so forth. And... We had to make sure that we arrived on time and all of that. And humanly speaking, humanly speaking, at a point, in fact, about 30 minutes, 30 minutes to the time that we eventually secured the tickets, there was, all hope was lost. They told us there's no room again. This and that and that has happened. So they, they were, there had to be changes and there was no human way. I called the guys and I said, guys, this is the situation we're in now. If things get bad, this and that and that, this is worse. Let's just prepare for the worst. But God is faithful. Let me tell you something. It did not take more than 10 minutes before they wrote all of the tickets. Is that true? We're the last to, to get into the flight. Hallelujah. They were standing. I'm not sure they were even aware. You see that? And they just, the tick, everything was in less than 10 minutes. God, when God is ready to stand up on your case, see, when you see God keep quiet, Papa, they boy, you preach a message, when God is silent, when God is silent, that's when you should start talking, praise him, give him room, give him space through your, your praise, and say, Lord, I don't know what you are doing, but I know you are doing something. Take the time to prepare the table, because it's going to be a large table. There are people who should come. Take the time. When God arises, he will scatter. It. Let me tell you something. When it is your season of breakthrough, I don't care whether they say curses or yokes or X, Y, Z. God will stamp everything and open the door and say, let me see the man who will stop him. For someone, if you will just wait a little longer, this is the word of the Lord. The miracle will happen before you celebrate Christmas. Just wait a little longer. The mighty God is still alive. He told you and he's still faithful. Oh, we judge him faithful. It will still happen. It will still happen. Who is God speaking to? It will still happen. It will still happen. One of our brothers here, both him and, the, and his wife, the, the ladies in Oshas and all of that. I remember when that brother met me. They are married now. They married early this year. I think around April. I remember when that brother met me. And the brother was, you know, he was sharing with me a bit about his marriage life and all of that. And I told him, I said, God will bless you and God will do a quick work. Brothers and sisters, within a short time, I was shocked. And if you see the pretty and godly lady, a combination of everything, within and without. Come on, ushers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whereas someone has been searching without the help of God for decades searched all over 
couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Let's sing it one more time. I searched all over. Come on. I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Hallelujah. His ability to restore. God can restore the job of your father. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God can restore it. He can restore it. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. God can restore every aspect of your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He said, I will restore to you the years the canker worm has stolen. The palmer worm and the caterpillar, I will restore. It is within my power to restore. The second attribute of God. In 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. Let's project it very quickly. 2 Kings chapter 6. I want us to hurry up because we'll pray. Wow. We must rush. From now, take up wings. We are going to rush. Hallelujah. 6 verse 1. And the sons of the prophets came to Elisha. Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Verse 2. Let us go, we pray thee unto Jordan. And take thence every man a beam. And let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, he said, go ye. In other words, let's increase space. Verse 3. And... And one said, be content, I pray thee, to go with thy servants. And so Elisha goes with them. Verse 4. So they went with them. He said, and as they came to Jordan, they were cutting down wood to make the place for their meeting. Five. But as one was felling the beam, what happened? The axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, alas, master. It was borrowed. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I need help. I collected this to do the work of God, but it has landed me in trouble. Mm. Verse 6. And the man of God said, Calm down. He said, Where did it fall? There is a God that can restore. Who is God speaking to? And he showed him the place. And he used an insignificant thing. Sorry. A stick that has no relevance and he threw it upon and the Bible says the iron from under started swimming until it came to the top verse 7 therefore he said take it up to you and he took his hand I prophesy to someone in the name that is above all names in a way and a manner you never expected to happen my God will show up for you before the end of this month in the name that is above all names i'm speaking to you there are things that you have lost and only god can give you i stand in under my office and in the name that is above all names i prophesy to you no matter where that axe is it is still in the river it didn't disappear it only left you in the name that is above all names we command that axe head to float please sit down Listen, look at me. The fact that you don't see a thing does not mean it has stopped existing. It is there, but it is not within your reach. It is within the power of the master to call it from wherever it is. I hope you understand. How many of us can state, um, I think that's the first law of thermodynamics, right? What does it say? Huh? energy can neither be what nor destroyed is that true 
that means the concept of disappearance is a mirage it only leaves your sight but it's somewhere there mm. the bones were scattered but when the master spoke they found themselves you would have thought it's over hear me let me tell you something armed robbers came to your house and they stole you do not see what they've carried but there are many kinds of it in the earth and when the master steps up as a restorer you will see things in dramatic ways come into your life and when god restores he does not give you what you lost he gives you what you lost and what you would have gained if you still had it that's what restoration is if god just gives you what you lost it's called progress not restoration until god gives you plus the balance on top said who has believed our report the third attribute of God very quickly that gives us the basis for hope in this life is God's ability to bring acceleration God's ability his attribute as a God that can suspend time he can move beyond time move beyond protocols he can expedite the process of certain things. His ability to bring acceleration. In 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 41 to 46. 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 41 to 46. The Bible speaks to us about the prophet. Hallelujah. A great prophet of God. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up and drink, for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Next verse. We read down to 46. And Ahab went to eat and drink, and Elijah went to the top of Camel. Watch this. Ahab ate and drink, and he started running. He had started going, but Elijah seemed to be delayed. He was here sitting. Let's watch what happens. And he cast himself down upon the earth and prayed. 43. And all of that he told his servant go and check until seven times 44 all the time while those seven times were happening Ahab was already running he was already moving ahead the Bible says it came to pass that behold there arises a little cloud like a man's hand and he said go up and say to Ahab okay right here sorry I, I got it wrong this is the point where he told Ahab prepare your chariot get it down uh, that the rain stopped in us so now he started running verse 45 the Bible says, and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel so we see that Ahab had gone very far but the man of God was there no help 46 and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he gathered up his loins and ran on barefoot come on say speed a man on barefoot started running he said he ran before ahab and he caught up with him down to jezreel so it gives us hope that no matter what the delay is god can god can give speed to your feet and you will run and in one month you will do what has taken men 10 years 10 years brothers and sisters believe me it is possible when God quickens he said he will make your feet like the hinds feet his ability to bring acceleration the Bible tells us how that when Jesus told the disciples to go to the other side they entered the boat and they started going ahead of him is that true and the Bible says he stayed to pray they were six hours ahead of Jesus six hours ahead but when he got up he started walking and within a short time he caught up with them and he was about to overtake them they thought he was a ghost and he walked on water it doesn't have to be the normal process when God steps in he can break protocols are you hearing what I'm saying in John chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10 but our verse of emphasis is from verse 6 to 10 project verse 6 to 10 for us John chapter 2 from verse 6 to 10 the Bible tells us about a wedding in Cana 
and the bible tells us they took out time to prepare that wedding it probably took them days to make wine but that wine finished they needed a miracle and something happened it says and they were there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the jews containing two or three this and that and then verse seven and jesus said fill the water pots it does not have to undergo the process of fermentation there is a spiritual fermentation process that can happen come on now ah yes you don't need to wait until it produces all of those things are you getting what i'm saying hmm. no enzymes no nothing no ethanol no nothing no no hydrocarbon no nothing a technology in the spirit fill the water pots with water and they fill them up to the brim verse 8 and he said draw it out and take it to the governor chemical reaction finished yield 100 percent are you getting my point 100 percent no waste nothing to throw away no releasing of any co2 or anything no chemical process finished expedited time at once and he said draw it out and take it verse 9 and when the ruler of the feast tasted the wine so on the way it became wine at once and he knew not whence it was he said the governor of the feast called the bridegroom verse 10 and he said every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine and when men have well drunk then that which is worse comes in other words people give their best at the first time but he said why have you kept the good wine until now there is someone here within a short time what you will do men will think you took 10 years to do it but that it happened within days one of our brothers Mukhtar I think he did his whole, his whole project within a short time because they later cancelled the whole thing and what he did within two days was greater than what he did in months everybody shout speed shout it again oh God will accelerate your life hallelujah finally before we pray how do we activate hope it must be activated it doesn't just happen three keys and we'll rise up to pray activating hope principle number one total surrender to the lordship of jesus christ you want to activate hope in your life both blessed hope and hope in this life it starts with surrendering to jesus christ total surrender gives you an eternal consolation that in the end of all things you will be with jesus forever i call it the master hope the master hope when you surrender to the lordship of jesus christ you have ultimately activated hope scriptural references romans 5 verse 2 don't project romans 5 verse 2 and then first john 5 verse 13 talks about us knowing that we have eternal life so total surrender to the lordship of jesus number two how do we activate hope the power of testimonies the power of testimonies the power of testimonies psalm 66 verse 16 the power of testimonies psalm 66 verse 16 declaring your testimony activates an assurance in the listeners the bible is full of testimonies that many have held on to and seen it reproduced in their lives testimonies can reproduce themselves in the lives of the listeners so every time i testify of what god has done in my life it activates hope so someone who is about giving up just hears that god did this and he said if god did it then i will still hold on hallelujah psalm 66 verse 16 says come and hear all ye that fear the lord and i will declare what he had done for my soul i will declare it i will declare it in luke chapter 8 from verse 26 to 39 just give us verse 39 luke chapter 8 from verse 39 but the whole context is 26 to 39 the bible speaks to us about the madman in gadara hallelujah 
the madman in Gadara, after he was healed, he was blessed. He wanted to go with Jesus and Jesus said, no, go. And the Bible says, return to your house. Jesus was telling him, go and testify. Return to your house and show how great things God has done unto thee. And the Bible says, and he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. So he published. Testimonies are very powerful. Let me give you two more scriptures. Psalm 22 verse 22. And Psalms 40 verse 9. Psalms 22 verse 22. And Psalms 40 verse 9. All these scriptures point to the fact that it is important for us to testify. In fact, the Bible says it this way. It says, and they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Your testimony is very important. There are many people here, God has done too many things for you, but nobody knows. Nobody knows about it. Hallelujah. When they say, submit your, your names and come and tell us what God has done. There are many of us here that have striking testimonies. Many of us come for counseling and God does remarkable things and we keep quiet. I tell you, we don't share one over 20 of the remarkable testimonies that happen in this house and through this ministry. In fact, there are more people who share testimonies outside of Koinonia than those who share testimonies here. When you share your testimony, you, you activate hope in the life of people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'll never forget Steve Strings. I remember one time um, he gave a testimony. It was a miracle how he got admission in ABU. He got admission on the third list. The first list came out, his name was not there. The second list came out and his name was not there. But he had the testimony of someone who were in living faith that Sunday. And the testimony of somebody. And the person testified that he went around Senate seven times. Angry and saying, Lord, this is Jericho. It must fall. And when admission list came out, his name was there. Steve String said, that's it. Steve Strings went round seven times. That list came out. His name was there because of testimonies. Listen, many of you have taken the same steps some people took and you got the result, but you have kept quiet. Hallelujah. One of our school of ministry people, he, he came in. I think he should be around here. And he came, he, he sent me a text, a very humbling testimony. In fact, I told him to come over at the school of ministry tomorrow just to share with, with our current students to bless them what God has remarkably done in his life within a short time God has done too many things for us and if you will not give him the glory you will stop seeing his hand in your life he said if you will not glorify me I will raise up stones meaning I will only raise up what will glorify me hallelujah so the power of testimonies Number three, and this is where we wrap up tonight. The ministry of prophets of God. How do you activate hope? The ministry of true prophets of God. Not just prophets in office, but men and women of God who stand in prophetic dimensions. Listen to me. This is, this is very important. I want you to listen because we're about to pray. All through scripture, true prophets of God have been dispensers of hope and agents of change. Men have always been God's weapons that he will use to bring hope alive and to create changes in people. Hallelujah. Joseph was the prophet of God that was sent to Egypt to preserve them. Elijah was sent to a widow in Zarephath to preserve her and restore to her what the famine had taken. Elijah was also sent, um, Elisha was sent to the woman in 2 Kings chapter 4. The Bible talks about the wife of the sons of the prophet. They were about to take her children and do trade by battle with them. And the woman ran to the prophet. And the prophet said, what do you have in your house? Do this and that and that. And the woman came out of the situation. Hallelujah. In 2 Kings chapter 5, the story of Naaman. 
the Bible says Naaman was the captain of the of the Syrian army he was a great man but he was leprous hallelujah and when they sent him with a letter the prophet gave an instruction go and wash yourself seven times in Jordan and that was it the scripture we just shared in 2nd Kings chapter 6 the restoration of the axe head by the instruction of a prophet of God listen to me when a people lack a prophetic voice when a people or a ministry or a terror a, a, a territory lack two apostolic and prophetic voices then hopelessness despair and doom will become their experience i'm saying this please get it i will repeat myself when a people when a ministry when a territory lacks true apostolic and prophetic voices then hopelessness despair and doom becomes their experience again and again and again i'm trying to look for a scripture that just came to my spirit ezekiel 22 verse 30 let's look at something that the prophet said ezekiel 22 verse 30 we're rounding up right now while they project that i'd like you to write ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 7 we've read the scripture the value of dry bones it happened to the prophet of god the prophet of god gave an instruction every time you are in need of hope you are in need of change among other principles you engage in is find a true prophet of god he said and i sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that i should not destroy it but i found none so i destroyed the land because there was no man the bible says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore there must be a voice let me tell you something in every territory and every every society there are prophetic agents that god plans strategically they represent dispensers of hope men who god stamps their voice stamp their words hallelujah Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13, the last verse. Hosea chapter 12, the prophet told us something that has become an instruction in the body of Christ. Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. He said, I'm by a prophet. The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. By what? A prophet. Now hold on. It is true that God delivered the people. But their hopes were shattered until a man showed up. They never, it is true that there was prophecy that there would be deliverance for them. But nothing happened until a man, Moses, showed up. The moment that prophet of God appeared, hope was brought back to life. When they saw him, he gathered them and said, people, begin to prepare. You are days away from this captivity and you'll be out. And he went and challenged that, 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 that gun called Pharaoh. Bishop Oyedeko said, prophets are territorial commanders. It's exact word. Now, it may sound arrogant, but it is not. It's an election of grace. When God calls a man and truly puts a true apostolic and prophetic man to God makes it a point of duty to back you. When you speak in the name of the Lord, he said, I prophesied, but I did it as I was commanded. And he said, hear ye the word of the Lord, spoken to an envoy. He said, believe the Lord. And by a prophet, sorry, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, he still preserved them. The ministry of true apostles and prophets of God in the earth has not ended. Contrary to the popular theology that people speak, it has not ended. There are still men and women 
but you doubt their ministry to your detriment. The Bible says, believe the Lord and you shall be established. It said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Doubt the Lord and refuse to be established. Doubt his prophets and suffer for the rest of your life. It's not idol worship. I know there is an imbalance where men have made themselves gods. But I can tell you, it is part of the program of God to use men to speak in the purposes and the counsel of God. When the prophet Simeon held on to Jesus Christ, he began to prophesy to him. There was a prophet as 84 years she had been in the temple waiting for the consolation of Israel. She carried Jesus Christ and spoke and she was ready to die. And Jesus walked and nothing could kill him until he gave his life by a prophet. He came. Isaiah prophesied unto us a child is born. By a prophet he came. By a prophet he was preserved. If Jesus Christ needed to subscribe to the true ministry of the prophetic then you cannot do without it so to be a peacemaker is to sustain the intelligence and the ability to give to caesar what belongs to caesar and then give to god what belongs to god why do we expose people to the power of god to lift what is there about lifting because you cannot make impact when you are in the pit when joseph was in the well he remained there we don't know what he was doing down there but one thing we know is that he was not making any impact he was alone when he was brought out and honored in the palace when he was there he was able to salvage his brothers why do we have to prophesy speed are we together the reason is because our, the unit of destiny is time please listen very carefully whatever eats your time has eaten a portion of your life many of us got born again late already you dedicated a major chunk of your life to ignorance and to the service of the devil and now that you are born again there is still the law of process and if you are to follow the law of process in its normal course you will never have the time to know god and serve so god will have to introduce i call them systems of advantage he will bring them into the equation of your destiny to restore time so that in one year god can put 10 years inside one year and then now he can allow you to make progress are we together yes a woman who has been barren for 10 years already she, she would have had maybe three children at least well spaced and happy even if she has one child, she's making progress. But restoration has not yet happened to her. But when God gives that woman triplets, he didn't give her children. He took time and brought it back. Nine months. And an experience that was to span nine years, he brought it in nine months. Are we together? So I want you to see every miracle and everything that happens to you with respect to its contribution or its inhibition to your knowing God and pursuing him. If you remain poor, like many people have chosen to, the challenge there is that they will not know God and they will stop others from knowing God. If you remain weak and you are not strong, the challenge is one day your body will not be able to host the spirit again and it will leave. Because there is a requisite health condition for the spirit to be able to stay in this body. Your body is your passport to function in this realm. Not your passport to be alive. You don't need the body to be alive. But you need the body to be authorized to function in this dimension of God's kingdom. This is the reason why we agree with people that demonic sicknesses like cancer like hiv and all these sicknesses that don't have names but have symptoms and the pain that they bring when we agree for people to be touched it's not just showing that a man of god is anointed it's a way of saying god is interested in your longevity god is interested in you serving him because those things are death sentences hallelujah are we together so I want you to see everything that you will receive tonight with respect 
to its contribution when you see someone getting healed or getting delivered don't look at the rowdiness of the process rejoice with that person because something is happening to that person that will grant him or her the ease to serve God now are we together now our messages must be central and eventually remember the formula in in the days of Moses there were serpents but there was a brazen serpent that was lifted and that the condition was that if you set your gaze on that one you will survive this one in any case you must look at the serpent you can choose to look at the one that is on the ground there or look at the one lifted are we together now and that anyone who stayed there ignoring all of these things and stayed there that person was saved healing is pointless if it does not lead to Christ deliverance is pointless if it does not lead to Christ prosperity a job increase all kinds of miracles they are pointless if they do not lead to Christ so it's important for every one of us to get this number two the second thing I would say tonight is the fallacy listen carefully we must conquer the fallacy of trying to do what we have not become the futility of attempting to live out a lifestyle that has not been captured in our paradigm and our mindsets listen very carefully it is futile to attempt to do things any lifestyle that your mindset cannot host is not yours this is very powerful listen to my teaching the mystery of deliverance I call it deliverance through transformation many believers listen to me very carefully now there are people who do not believe that the idea and the concept of deliverance even exists. it does it truly does the only balance is that Casting out a spirit or an influence, as I always teach, is not the end of it. Now, please, we need Africa, we need to hear this because um, we many people do not want to go through the labor that brings transformation so that our experiences now reflect what the word of God says. I can cast out a spirit out of a man. The influences can leave you. Spirits not only stay in men. A spirit can stay in a business. A spirit can stay in your... It doesn't have to be in and around the faculties of man. Mm -mm. Man is their most preferred habitation, but not the only habitation. Spirits can stay in a business. They can stay anywhere. Anything that can have a material expression can be home to spirits. They can stay in a challenge. A challenge can be a body and a spirit stays there. Are we together now? Now, but praying and setting you free from the influence of that spirit is only part one of your true freedom. The other part is that you must be transformed. Please say transformed. When Jesus was given what we would know to be his manifesto the messianic prophecy isaiah 61 and then luke chapter 4 he said the spirit of the lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings listen carefully to the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted are we together and then he said to set the captives free he had sent me to proclaim one of the versions who say proclaim deliverance there is a dimension of deliverance that is not conducted it is through the accurate dispensing of the word of god that means that your understanding must become fruitful to that dimension then your lifestyle follows suit are we together now it is futile to try to do things any experience you want to live out that has not been captured as a reality in your thinking Believers, a major part of our growth 
is in the realm of the mind. You have to know this. It's unfortunate that many people criticize any effort to transform the mind, to meticulously mentor believers into understanding. Usually they think it is weakness. A major part of the ministry of Jesus was dedicated in mentorship. In fact, he did not finish the curriculum. When he resurrected, he called all of them to the lecture and for 40 days, he needed to tidy up some things before he would leave. Their growth happened principally through his, the mentorship of the word. He started in Matthew chapter 5, the Beatitudes, teaching them the ways of the kingdom. This is how we function in this kingdom. When they embraced it, then they now made room to be empowered by the spirit. That means the ministry of the Holy Spirit will look almost useless in the life of a believer who does not contend for transformation. There is a dimension of his spirit that brings us to that transformation. But the richer part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is seen when we are transformed, not before we are transformed. The primary role of the Holy Spirit before our transformation is to guide us into the body of truth allocated to construct our understanding so that we reign. That's his primary assignment. And then to convict and so on and so forth. The richness of his ministry, the potentials of a man's receiving the Holy Spirit is experienced first by him and then by his territory only when he's transformed. That means if we are not transformed, we will shortchange the potentials of the life and the ministry of the Holy Spirit as can be seen in us. Most people think when the Holy Spirit comes, he just continues to transform you and then that's... No, 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 no. Transformation has an end. Are we together now? That means you should be able to attain onto a level of commendable maturity where the Holy Spirit says, now we can do business together. You have risen to a realm where I can freely manipulate your faculties to the degree to which they will allow me to express myself richly. Transformation is powerful. Many believers will not contend for transformation. And there is a consequence. If you do not contend for transformation, the, the, the consequence is that you will return back to the circle of exorcism, casting out devils, temporary liberty, casting out devils, temporary liberty, casting out devils, temporary liberty. Remember that the spirits don't need to only come. See, listen, let me tell you. Come, um, Dr. Mecca, look at this. This gentleman can, I can speak over his life prophetically. Watch this. And within the space of two, three days, even one day, this man can receive a million naira, two million naira. Now, he has not prospered. That blessing is to help him to be able to solve the needs that press him so that he can learn the ways that prosper men. Because the devil is not afraid of the money he's held. The money is not in his mind. So he, he is not his own. It was a loan that was given to him prophetically. It becomes his when the money is in his mind. So he can hold on to that and say, ah, apostle is powerful. And after two months, the, the futility of his understanding will abort that miracle. Are we together now? Because he does not know the ways of God allocated for the increase and the sustenance of resources. Inevitably, no matter how careful he, used that, he uses that money, it must finish and must leave him. It's not an attack, it's the law. I've taught you. Because his growth does not allow this kind of result. Prophecy routed a way of bringing it to help him fast. But because transformation was not there, it must leave him. Now, when it leaves him, he will come back again and say, Apostle, I brought 10,000 like that day. And I will still speak. I will say now in the name of Jesus, may God bless you. This time around, it doesn't matter how much comes. It's still the same thing. Whether it's 100,000 or 10 million, he's still in trouble. He's not free. Are we together now? So it is true that the spirit of poverty 
can be around this man's business this man's life and so on and so forth i'm just using this as an example now after i take authority over that spirit the bible says when a spirit leaves a man it goes through dry regions looking for a safe place a place of habitation not finding any the spirit will advise itself i will arise like the prodigal son and return back to my house he's still calling the man that means you remain just because a spirit leaves you or leaves your business does not mean you are free it finds the house swept clean but empty and then the bible says it gathers seven others jesus is teaching here now that means this is how the realm of the spirit works and returns back to that man so that the latter state of that man is even worse than the former and because of his ignorance he will say the man of god is fake the man of god is not fake you are not transformed to sustain the miracle are you getting where the ignorance of believers come from At least you were in a, you, you, you had a house. After the breakthrough, now you don't even have a house again. And you say, ah, I don't know what kind of a reverse anointing works in this church or in this ministry or somewhere. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. But now imagine with me that God steps in over Dr. Emeka's life. Are we together? And then the Lord blesses him, still using the finance that, that, that I'm giving an illustration around. And this guy now, God blesses him. And he decides to say, now that at least one million has come, my destiny is bigger than one million. But one million can quickly help me pay maybe my rent. Are we together? And just sort out my children now. I can't, even if I can't pay everything, I can pay first them. I can rest. While he's doing that, he now subjects himself and says, do you know what? I want to find out God's ways. The ways are located for the prosperity of the saints. And he begins to gather these teachings. While he's listening, do you know what he's doing? He's closing the door. This guy is prospering, not when he's doing business. When he is fortifying his mindset. So that the possibility for that spirit to come in does not exist again. To preach deliverance to the captives. Many believers continue to hop from prayer house to prayer house. Now, I'm, I'm not being sarcastic. I would not do that. From church to church, from apostle to apostle, prophet to prophet, pastor to pastor, in need of what only transformation can sustainably bring. Are we together now? Yes. We will prefer to do all kinds and all manner of prayer than to settle down and say something is wrong notice no matter what job this guy gets by prophecy he loses it through ignorance prophecy brings it ignorance when the devil marks that you have this stronghold he will no longer fight the prayer that is coming this is how satan mocks many men of god across africa before they pray the demon leaves joyfully because he knows he will come back he studies the mindset and finds out that it has become a stronghold. The door has been opened and has been hinged to something to keep that door open. And the spirit says, I can stroll around. The service will soon finish. And I will route through just one door of ignorance. And I'm back to the life, back to the business. Are we together? Very, very powerful. So this gentleman, as he's transformed, something is happening to him. You will find out prophecy. Now you will see the potential of the prophecy or the prayer or the deliverance, as you would call it. It will show in his transformation. So he can return and say, 10 years ago, watch this. Once upon a time, I was poor or I was weak or I was under all kinds of yokes and all of that. Then a day came when that spirit or that influence over my life was addressed by the power of God, comma, and then I subjected myself to a season to learn the ways of God and the Holy Ghost, the more I expanded my spiritual capacity, the more his potential, the richness of his anointing and his presence manifested through me. Now look at my life. I'm a testimony from here to here. I never want this place to just become a place of miracles. Ah, 
there's a service so let's go you'll be healed you'll be blessed i agree but i i disagree that you'll be sustainably blessed sustainably healed sustainably lifted except that in addition to the prayer and that which you will receive tonight you must contend for knowledge this kingdom is knowledge based and not any kind of knowledge you are not at liberty to choose what you want to hear no there is a body of truth already allocated you are not given the luxury of inventing what you want it may not be comfortable to your your status quo or whatever church or whatever teaches you listen you must submit yourself to the whole counsel of god not the one that looks pleasant to you doctrinally speaking if you want to stand balanced and to receive the victory to walk in the fullness of the victorious life then you must submit yourself to the body of truth allocated to bring you results imagine with me for instance that this were a student and then a lecturer is teaching and he says i don't like this course maybe a medical you're a doctor so imagine a very difficult medical course and then he's saying i don't like this one i like this one now you already know that this guy is in trouble there is a reason why he's taught that as uncomfortable as this you have to love your future as a doctor more than the pain to settle down and say I, I may not like it it doesn't i mean who would want to touch a cadaver who would want to walk with a dead body who would want to keep giving people injections all around i mean these guys just inject people and do all kinds of things who would want to do that but you have to do it that's the only way the uh what the, what's inside that the um drug will get into your body there's no bluetooth for it it has to go directly <laughs> are we together so this guy may look cruel while he's giving you that injection you have to choose health or to just have a temporal comfort and you endure the thing and receive it for a few days and after that you are fine this is it it's amazing that the believers that choose what to believe that means that um by let me explain what i mean the believers that sit down and select what to believe according to the comfort it provides are the people who don't have results isn't it funny that believers who do not have results are the ones who sit down and choose and say no 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 um i don't like this i like this i don't like this it's pride the bible says when you are ready to receive there is a quality that is required it's called meekness that you receive with meekness the engrafted word you must embrace the whole counsel of god to experience all of god are we learning what i'm sharing with you is very powerful this is what will give value to the prayers that we'll have you know africa we like prayer and prayer is good but visionless prayer that is not seen as one of the keys that connects to other keys will only continue to be a dissipation of energy flattery in religion and will never produce results the value of prayer is in the role that it plays while other kingdom principles are kept prayer does not just work generically regardless of your obeying other principles it's why we continue to dissipate spiritual energy and convince ourselves that based on the pain that comes in prayer god must be answering spiritual things are interconnected and the entire system must be healthy for you to experience all of god if you choose a dimension and leave the rest so we have people who are always praying always delivering something always casting out demons now please i i, I don't say it with with a with a heart of sarcasm at all don't don't find offense in any way this way you will never become a portrait of the victory of christ it will never truly happen it was never supposed to be an endless pursuit forever what then is the excellency of the finished work of christ then on the other hand we have those who continue to flatter themselves that just by default they are free oh boy and their lives continue to show that this is not correct when they are sick they don't say christ paid for my sickness they go to the pharmacy and then they believe 
that every other thing is all right. The possibility of sickness, the possibility of defeat, no matter how temporal, is already a clue that victory is established in Christ from the prophetic standpoint, but it takes your engaging with God to make it manifest. And people stop here and continue to flatter themselves that they are free until they head to the grave. Are we together? I shall not die. You are deteriorating. No, no, God forbid. I know that I'm fine. You are going down. You are having all kinds of dreams and nightmares. You finish praying immediately and lie down. The spirit says, he's asleep now. Let's continue. And you get up and say, I didn't see anything. You are joking there. Until they kill you in the spirit and you wake up and die physically back again. There is something called the death of a fool. It is the death that comes as a result of assumption and pride and ignorance. We must embrace the whole counsel of Christ. If you did not prosper by default, then you will not stay healthy by default. You will not stay delivered by default. It has to be engaged through growth. They are stabilizers. They provide the dimensions of your stability. If you're with me, say amen. amen. This is the second thing we must learn because... I, I, I continue to get tired of believers again and again. It is this, if this kind of teaching does not come, the danger is that you, the man of God, who is always doing the deliverance, you are in trouble. Number one, you will be idolized. And that is not healthy for you. Are we together? Number two, you will be weary. Because even if you delegate someone and say, pray for them, they'll say, I've gone. You do your own prayer again. And you will continue. These people will wear you out. must know the truth and know it enough to set you free are we blessed i wrote something down here our spiritual efficiency as far as living in victory and advancing the cause of the kingdom is concerned will require specific knowledge of the ways the principles the methodologies of the kingdom praise the lord I think there was a time a gentleman sent me a very funny text. I know that he was just a, I don't know if he was a, a, a male, female, or he just sent me a text and said, Apostle, God has called you to be an apostle to preach Christ crucified, not principles and not systems and strategies. I started interceding for the guy because his, his life will be a compendium of pain. I guarantee you. You see, time is a revealer. And it's terrible to carry so many people in your ignorance only to find out after many decades that you're in trouble. There is a dimension of Jesus called Jesus the way. Jesus the way. Jesus did not just say, I am life. He said, I am the way. A methodology. It is still Jesus. This man who was proposing that believed that for whatever reason that the teaching of the principles of the kingdom would veer people away from Christ if it's not taught with balance if it's taught as an end to itself and not a means to an end I didn't even reply I just felt I love the person who knows maybe the person is following today I just hope that the person has grown because this kind of copycat pride is what is responsible for the eventual pain of many people where a man of God will stand and not know what to believe again. Your ignorance has been represented in every dimension. And now you stand and wonder, what do I do? You must be men and women of conviction based on the truth of God's word. Listen, if you do not know the ways of God, the primary way that we know God is through scripture. The second way we know God is through the names of God. The third way we know God is through the person of Jesus. Jesus, the Bible calls him the, the, the express image of the invisible God. And the last way we know God is through experience. There are not many other ways. These are the ways allocated. 
and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation it takes wisdom to see the potentials of salvation in your life it says that you draw with joy out of the wells of salvation when you know god and encounter him he will expose you to his ways it is the knowledge of his ways that brings beauty and glory to your christian life are we together two scriptures and then we'll pray thank you my friend exodus chapter 6 to our business for the night now exodus chapter 6 from verse 6 to 7 blessed be the name of the lord wherefore say unto the children of israel i am the lord and i will bring you out from under the burdens of the egyptians i will read you out of their bondage and i will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments seven and i will take you to me for a people and i will be to you a god and ye shall know that i am the lord your god how do you know by the mighty acts there is an experience that i will give you that will cause you and validate to you again that i am the lord your god which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the egyptians psalm 34 and verse 19 please look up it is not the best of god that believers are challenged however it is also not unusual in the economy of god that believers are challenged listen very carefully it while it is true that it is not a the best reflection of the zoe life if and when believers are challenged in any aspect of their life it is the flawlessness the dexterity the ease of their lives show the multifaceted dimensions of god however because the treasure is in earthen vessels it is also not unusual please listen carefully and deliver yourself from the ignorance that people continue to propose that make believers feel guilty for being challenged god in his dealings with men knew that there will always be room here and there are we together for the devil to seem to find a place and negate the reality of the victory of Christ. And so God allocated all kinds of systems so that if for any reason as a believer you find yourself in a predicament that is not consistent with what the Bible says should befit you when you are a partaker of eternal life, you don't feel bad. You can now begin to engage the systems allocated. Here's what the Bible says. Many are the afflictions not of a man many are the afflictions of the righteous not a righteous the righteous many are the afflictions of the righteous not the affliction of sinners there is something called the affliction of the righteous now it doesn't really matter how it came the most important thing is that it is there and that there is a provision next um it says but the lord this is your advantage many are the afflictions of an unbeliever but he will remain there because he does not have the lord as his anchor but many are the afflictions of the righteous the advantage of the righteous in affliction is that he has the lord who can deliver him out of them all out of them all so the embarrassment is not the challenge listen believers stop allowing challenges to make you feel i'm not a christian maybe it's because i did not pray no no not at all not at all the bible tells us that many are the afflictions so it is not unusual when your prayer request is almost a notebook many are the afflictions of the righteous he says but the lord delivered him so god is a deliverer 
He delivers. He delivers him. What is deliverance? I've taught you. Deliverance doesn't just have to do with spirits. No, it's the parting away, separation between you and the obstacles that impede your progress. It's called deliverance. The moment a platform is created where there is a separation between you and the influences that impede your progress, be it demonic, be it mental, be it physical, in whatever variation and fashion it comes, the Lord delivered him out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. So it is possible that a pastor can have his children go haywire. And while that is happening, rent issues, financial issues. While that is happening, maybe his spiritual life is going down. While that is happening and he sits and feels bad. And some ignorant believer comes and says, oh dear. It's just because you don't know God your life. No, no. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. But when you remain there, then you agree with that situation that the victory of Christ is a lie. That means when you find yourself in that situation, the revelation of the fact that the Lord can bring you out should not allow you to sit there comfort, um, comfortable. Are we together? Don't find comfort in that situation. You get up and begin to press. The woman with the issue of blood knew. She understood that she was a daughter of Abraham. The one who was took, uh, you know, bound, she did not know. But this one knew. So she could not heal herself, but she was already rehearsing. Oh, Jesus should come around this place. As soon as Jesus came, she knew already. She pressed and touched the hem of his garment. Never become comfortable. When your life is yet to reflect the full potentials of that which comes with the life of God, the victorious life. Your assignment as a believer is to continue to scan through every area of your life to give thanks over the areas that are now reflecting in experience and in reality the victory of Christ. But then to write down and begin to deal decisively with the areas that are yet to confirm to the, the reality of the victory of Christ. I love Naaman. The Bible says Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army. He says he was a very valiant man. So in one aspect of his life, he was doing exceptionally well. Then the Bible says, but he was leprous. And I'm sure Naaman just said, oh, at least I'm a captain. It's all right. I can live my life like that. But a little slave girl came to plant dissatisfaction. She said, oh, that my Lord would listen to me paraphrasing there is a prophet that you can go to in Israel and you go to that prophet and this other side of your life will also come and you know come under alignment and he dragged himself there long story short at the end of it the Bible says he became his body became as fresh as that of a child don't be ashamed of your challenges and your pain but don't be comfortable with them either you should be doing something, praying about it, reading about it. There's, there has, if you are at ease, when things are not going well, it's a sign that you are not a serious believer. It is true that you don't have the power as it were to, to minister healing to yourself, but you should sit down and say, look, where do you know that God is moving? Where do you know this situation? I may not have the power to change it, but I know that this is not how a home should look like. We are up today, down tomorrow. I have read in the Bible that there is favor, but I must sincerely admit that I have not seen it reflect in experience. I will continue to confess favor. I will never speak negatively, but then I will partner with God in pursuit of the graces, the places, the dimensions that will make this become my experience. That's how we walk in victory. Now, thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. Are we together? And so this, this gentleman now, he knows that this is what the Bible has said about his life. That you shall be the head and not the tail. He's born again. He's believed it. But he's becoming the tail almost forever. And then he goes to read. There has to be something wrong. He doesn't know what is wrong. But his dissatisfaction is attracting the spirit of wisdom. 
You see that now. He does not know what to do. But one thing he knows is that his life is not yet a reflection of the word of God. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, the excellency of your knowing God is tested when you insist that your life becomes a reflection. That insistence is what the Bible calls faith. It is not the wishing, your insistence to see to it. I know I don't have a child now. No problem. I will not kill myself. Many are the afflictions. So there's no embarrassment. You can say whatever you want to say. Ah, call me a barren, well, men are not barren, no, barren woman. Are we together? Important man, whatever you want to call, no problem. However, I've read in my Bible that he can make the barren to become a joyful mother. So I will not just conclude and say, well, God, one day. No, 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 no. In your quietness, you say, Lord, just because I said thank you for my condition does not mean I will keep quiet. I'm thanking you because the Bible says, listen, the Bible says in everything gives thanks. It's a law. It has nothing to do with results. I give thanks out of obedience, but I insist out of faith. Please sit down and learn what will give value to our miracle service tonight. So that you will walk out of this place enlightened. These pockets of gaps and imbalances, why believers continue to mock themselves. You insist. And your insistence is luring the spirit of wisdom. Did the Bible not say through desire? Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1. Through desire, a man having separated himself, he says that he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. As your desire begins to grow, there has to be a way. We can't be begging in this family. My father is a pastor, we are still begging. My mother is an intercessor, we are still begging. My brother is a banker, he's looking like a, like a, a farmer. He's looking like somebody who, who, who just packs death on the road. There has to be a way out. I don't know the way, but I know there is a way. You see it now. Oh, My lifting has come assignment listen your assignment as a believer is to keep looking at your life and looking at scripture and record what is not matching let that become your project no matter listen 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 in as much as you don't feel bad for where you are you also don't feel good for where you are you have to find the way of growing yourself into the dimension of you that becomes the full expression of the life and the power of God. So a believer who is at ease is a foolish believer because there is a lot of conformity to be done. You may be good in your prayer life, but your finances is, is rubbishing the other part of your, your Christian life. So you must stay and say, thank you Lord for the one I've seen, but show me the one I've not seen. That's why the Bible says meekness. Because you see, let me tell you this. When you have results in one area of your life, usually you would deceive yourself into believing that one result covers for everywhere. No, you have to approach every aspect of the kingdom life uniquely. That you are a prayer warrior doesn't mean you are prosperous. That you are prosperous does not mean you have character. You have to approach these dimensions per dimension. Until every one of it, and let me tell you this. The more you conform and receive results, the more Christ can be seen through you. People look at your life and they can see the completeness. They know that this is how a believer should look like. If you see me limping, I'm a human being. Human beings can limp. 
there is nothing to be ashamed of the best are we together now if you see me hungry and I'm not fasting glory be to God I'm still alive but that's not God's best for me because if I'm hungry continually I will die are we together hunger can kill it doesn't kill you one day but eventually Poverty will not destroy you in one day, but you continue. The day your children can no longer go to school, you will be surprised at what you will do for money. It's true that you can say, look, we don't need a crowd. Even if it's five people, the most important thing is we are doing well. Excellent. After 10 years of five people, you will see whether you will remain in ministry or not. It is in the multitude of men that is a king's honor. Are we together? So tonight, listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. Tonight is a prayer of addition. Lord, thank you for this, but this area of my life, Lord, you've not visited it yet. And I'm, I'm, I give thanks, but I came for this miracle service thanking you for the one you did March, April, but also admitting that my life is not yet in experience, a reflection of all that should be. Is someone ready to pray? Lift your voice in one minute and cry to the God of heaven. It is not unusual for believers to be afflicted. But to remain at ease in the presence of affliction is a sign of insensitivity and a sign that you do not know the counsel of God. Let God be true. Let God be true. And every man a liar. Let God be true. And every condition a liar. Please pray. We are still praying. Let God be true. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now listen. Listen. Please hear me. In fact, I will, I will, media, if you can do a podcast of this charge uh, and put it separately, I think people will be blessed hearing it. This thing you just had is real deliverance for someone because it's explaining to you why the devil is not afraid of you no fortification that comes through knowledge hear me please tonight is not a night to be ashamed lord i thank you for this but mention the areas that are not yet there and be sincere Listen, let me tell you. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. The Bible says, as I hear you declare before my ears, not as you wish, there is nothing to be ashamed of. Are we together now? When you come before God, this is like a threshing floor. When you go to an injection room with the doctor, if they say turn and receive injection, you don't say, ah, doctor. No, 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 no. no. That's, that's not his business. The doctor is free. You are the one who is in trouble. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Listen to me. If there is any aspect of your life that is not yet reflecting the reality of the Christ life, don't feel bad. Don't let it tear down what God has done. Give thanks for the one he has done. But release your faith and say, Lord, I know there is more. And I'm here tonight as a token of my insistence that my life must become a perfect reflection of all the possibilities that are resident in the Christ. Someone pray. Please lift your voice and pray.
Hallelujah. Psalm 34 and verse 17. Psalm 34 and verse 17. God will only arise to separate you from the hindrances that impede your progress in life when you call. The righteous, the same righteous, many are the afflictions of the righteous. And the Lord delivers that righteous, but it does not come by default. That same righteous, the righteous must have to cry and say, Lord, I know that many are my afflictions. I give you thanks in pain, but bring me out of pain. Bring me out of pain. Lift your voice and cry. Please lift your voice and pray. Pray like a priest. Pray like one who is tired of this dimension. Separate me tonight, oh God. Separate me from the influences that impede my progress, that impede the fullness of my destiny in Christ. chapter 21 verse 1 and 2 praise the Lord we are going to pray Genesis chapter 21 from verse 1 and 2 and the Lord visited Sarah as he said there was a day he said it but did not do it there was a day the prophecy was still in motion now the time came when what God said he now did and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken verse 2 and Sarah conceived this is the proof that God visited her something happened in her life that did not happen before something happened in her destiny there has to be proof of something today that was not there yesterday Lord visit me tonight lift your voice and cry for a visitation visit my church visit my ministry visit my finances visit my spiritual life if someone pray And the Lord visited Sarah. And the Lord did unto Sarah. And the Lord visited Joshua Selman. And the Lord did unto Joshua Selman.
You're the King of kings and the Lord of the Lord. You are the King of One more prayer point and I'll begin to minister. Please listen. One more prayer point. Listen carefully. He said, tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they may go and serve me. They are not just going out for nothing. Tell Pharaoh, my people need to serve me. But this slavery is a distraction. Tell poverty. My people need to go. But if you don't let, they cannot serve me. Tell failure. Tell delay. Tell defeat. Hali parus kabaranta Tell a slow place of growth. Tell barrenness. There is a prophet who should have been born. You are stopping the generation from experiencing a prophet. Hallelujah. Now let me give you the last prayer point. Hallelujah. Listen. Anything that will give you the comfort to allow you to reveal Christ and focus on the agenda of God is God's business. The moment you bring his kingdom in the picture, hey. let me tell you, whether you invite it on him or not, it is his business. The key to getting God's attention is to bring Christ into the picture. The moment Christ and the purposes of God is in the picture, God's attention is drawn. What is going on here? When David came to threaten the nation of Israel, it was not a threat. It was, it was not just a threat to a king. It was a threat to a covenant and the continuity of God's program. And he raised David. And David said, Goliath, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? When Haman was plotting to destroy the nation of Israel, God said to kill my people so the Messiah will not come. This is my business now. Let me tell you the truth. Your challenges will remain your business oh, until you bring Christ into the picture. Until you bring the agenda of God. Lord, give me peace so I can serve you. Give me speed so I can serve you. Increase so I can focus. Unto the God that doeth wonders. Lift me, O God, so the nations can see your name and your praise. Let the oil come upon my life. Let the anointing come on my destiny. <laughs> Mention the area that must reflect Christ in your life. Thank you for this area. But Lord, I arise for this one. I place a demand by faith. I insist by faith.
Hallelujah. Now, please listen. Please listen to me. I want you to be very sensitive. The spirit of faith is strong in this place. Please listen. We'll be very fast tonight. The real revelation is what you have received now. The prayer, the miracles, and this is something that just comes in one sweep. This is the sustaining factor. You will marvel and wonder at what begins to happen to your life. Because these are the things that are bought prophecy. If you don't put them in place, you are wasting your time. It doesn't matter what comes. Please hear me. Whether you are outside, following online, please, I want you to listen. There is a God that doeth wonders. And God can arise. You see, the thing with God is, it is the process that takes time. When the word comes, the word is quick, quick, quick. You came with all kinds of prayer requests. And you think God will answer them moving one by one. Just one pronunciation. And that's the end of it. It's gone. So we're going to be very, very fast. I, I sensed, please listen very carefully. I'm going to pray for people, but I sensed that one of the, the major things that the Lord wants to do tonight is first the healing. You see, every time you see death, death and infirmity go together. Are we together now? So the healing that that healing grace we're trusting god that people who have come with all kinds of devilish oppressions but they must be free and then number two i will continue to pray this until i see it in your life i truly believe listen to me that there is a dimension of favor that the church not just individuals must shift into otherwise forget about the ease to serve the purposes of god this issue of god today money tomorrow god today argument final is, is a is a is a demonic thing you must press for these graces as we pray hallelujah father we have come again you are the god that doeth wonders the mighty God of heaven, we honor you and we bless you. Thank you for deliverances. Thank you for healings. Thank you for prophecies. Thank you for the manifestation of your power. Lord, let tonight be a remarkable night. Shift people, shift people, shift people. Take away obstacles and hindrances from their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, we're going, please listen, we're going to be very fast. I already see several manifestations of the angelic in this place now. Um, for those of you who are coming here for the first time, listen, take away anxiety, just relax. There is a God who is mighty. He will so shift your life in a way that will surprise you. Are we together now? Praise the Lord. Thank you. Bring the lady under the anointing here. The power of God is coming on one lady here. We have to be very fast now. Just here. I'm seeing a strong anointing of the Holy Ghost. The Lord is showing me, I'm in a vision now, and I'm seeing chains, people's feet with chains. And the Lord is saying, this is what has impeded people from making progress. You are moving, but you are not making progress. I'm about to pray for you now. Please, whether you are an usher or not, just help the usher so that we are very fast tonight. I'm seeing chains. I want to pray now. In the name that is above all names, I declare by the Spirit, Lord, that anyone here under the sound of my voice 
in any of the overflows, inside and outside. Bound by darkness, I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, right now, be free. I cause those chains. I cause those chains. Please bring them out. I decree and declare. Overflow one. I'm seeing such a mighty deliverance. Overflow one. Just overflow one. I'm seeing the power of God come. We have to be very fast. But I'm praying now. You're going to shout that name that is above all names. Listen. This deliverance is not just for you alone. Some of you came and left your family members for years. You are still in the same spot. You love God, but there is no progress. I want to pray for you now. At the count of three, there's such a strong anointing. In the name of Jesus, as you shout that name, that name that is above all names, I tell you, if God be God, then any chain holding you and holding your family must give way. Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be deliverance right now. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I cost those chains now in the name of Jesus. Bring them out. Shake Inside and outside. I decree and declare. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Please quickly, quickly, quickly. Let's have them outside. Ushers, you should know that, please. So that we can hurry up and make progress. Shalibros Kabaruda Shalakatos Kebriandash. Alusha Brenda Gedit. We are still going to pray. I'm seeing fire. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing it come on people, not just on chains, feet now. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, every overflow, those following online, this shout of the name of Jesus again. I'm seeing families, what looks like a door under chains, it must leave right now. One, two, three. I command every chain. Chain of darkness tying down people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be free now. I need the chain falling. Yeah. I need the chain falling. The Lord is that spirit. The Lord is that spirit. The same spirit that delivers, that heals, the Lord is that spirit, not another. It is the same Lord that gives salvation, that heals. The Lord is that spirit. Hallelujah. I want to rebuke barrenness. Now, first, physical barrenness. But then this barrenness is more than just physical barrenness. A state of unproductivity. And as I pray this prayer, many ladies prophetically, the power of God will come upon you, not necessarily because you are barren, but women stand as gates in the realm of the spirit. And God uses them to signify the opening of gates. In the name that is above all names, I declare right now, even as the Lord is revealing to me, there are all kinds of barrenness in this place. Physical barrenness, financial barrenness, spiritual barrenness. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, at the count of three right now, that anointing is coming on people inside and outside. Those with physical barrenness issues, God is stepping in right now. And those with all kinds of related barrenness issues, God is also stepping in at the count of three. I declare it right now. One, two, three. Let that power touch you right now. I release you. I release you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I release you by prophecy. 
I release entire dimension of fruitfulness. I speak it to your life. I speak it to your business. I bless the word upon you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Madam, please stop this woman for me. Madam, please come. Your life is about to change. I don't know who this woman is. From the town. Come again, man. From Sabo, from Sabo. From Sabo. I want to pray for you. Number one, please look at me, madam. The pain you experience at your back, huh? that back pain, the Lord is taking it away. Number two, God is stepping into your family. I'm looking at your family and I'm seeing that your family needs a real miracle. This is, this is an array of witchcraft. And if we don't pray to take lives, people will die like chickens. But we're going to pray. Now I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing Kogi State. Kogi State. The power of God is coming upon Kogi State right now. Right now I'm speaking. The power of God is a sign and a wonder how God does this, ladies and gentlemen. Kogi State. You see, for those of you who don't know, when God shows me that, the moment I mention the state, everyone who is part of that state, that anointing, will touch them. It's, it's a sign and a wonder is a grace i declare right now whether you know your state or not i'm seeing that map and i send the word i declare by the spirit let that anointing i'm seeing fire rising called this state shalish kobarakatai brateka teka koka barukata embregedesha i command liberty by the spirit of the living god i command liberty by the power of the holy ghost that every planting that is not of God associated with that territory. I call for liberty now. Now by the Spirit. Mama, please let me pray for you. I'm going to pray for you, Ma. And it will be like a dream. The way God will honor you and take away sorrow from your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for our mother. Honor this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, Mama, I declare over you in the name of Jesus, let everything that looks like shame and reproach and sorrow over you and your family, I cast it out of your life right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jennifer. 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 I'm hearing the name Jennifer. We have to really... Jennifer Where are you from? Huh? I've seen this thing before and I've announced it in miracle service There is something called Aleku You, you understand what I'm saying? I'm seeing that name again Where are you coming from? Where is she from? You are from Benway yes, State. Yes, we have Aleku there. What? Eh? Aleku. This is what I'm saying. Ah! I, know you now. I command that devil ah! out of her life now by the power of the Holy Ghost. See, listen, the Bible says, even the captives of the mighty, the lawful captives, shall be delivered. Every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. Every challenge. Relative to the grace that confronts him. My friend, this gentleman, tap him for me. Don't worry, let me talk with him. Look at me. The Lord is going to use you mightily. Huh? I'm stretching my hands now. I'm seeing an anointing coming on you. Number one, the grace for intercession. Amen. Number two, the teaching ministry. Amen. I decree and declare. Amen. May you step into that dimension Amen. of the spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
I shift you by prophecy into that dimension. In the, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm seeing one mama outside, overflow one. The Lord is showing me an elderly woman. It's like you came with your daughter or something. You didn't come alone. Please, if there's such a woman, there come. I'm seeing the Lord is showing me a woman. You came together with your daughter. We have to hurry up because we are going to pray for the sick now. Mighty God. This young lady, look at me, my dear. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! That's the end of it. I release you right now from everything that represents captivity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where are you coming from, Mama? I'm from seeing, Abuja. hold on. You came by road? Yes, sir. Kaduna, Abuja. Where do you stay? I stay in a... Where are you from? From part of Niger. It's Abuja? The... Yes. Like a boundary? Yes, sir. And that's where you are coming from? Yes. I want to pray for you. The spirit of death will leave your life and your family. Amen. My dear, this is your daughter. Is that lady your daughter? Yes, sir. I'm going to pray because this lady, as young as she's seen, God is going to use her. There is a grace for favor that is on this lady. You see, favor, favor. That's your name. No, it's not like I'm doing an impartation. Huh? Your name is what? What's her name? Favor. Hear me, my dear. The Lord is going to turn your life. You see this lady like this. Don't worry about what you are eating or not eating. You hear what I'm saying? This lady, God is going to honor her. The first miracle God is going to do to your daughter is in her brain. Amen. Because this has been your prayer. Eh? Yes, sir. She's yes, not sir. doing very well in I school. Saw. This, listen now. Let me talk to you. This lady is not a bad lady. She loves. She's a serious lady and a very good and disciplined lady. But this is an attack. I will pray for her. She will go back and you will marvel and wonder at what will happen to this lady. My dear, come, favor. Don't cry, eh? You came for miracle service. Father, the Bible declares that the memory of the just is blessed. I bless your mind. Understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. A family of four ladies, the chain of marital delay is breaking now. No, 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 it's, it's not everybody. I'm, I'm praying that this is an exact prayer to someone right now. I'm seeing, I, I just held this lady and the Lord showed me four, one, two, three, four ladies. <laughs> By the power of, please, why are they, don't, please don't bring people out that have not called, please. Why are they here? Huh? Where is she from? Overflow one. Okay, this is your daughter. Come, Mama. Where are you from? Where are you coming from? We are from Quarter Two, sir. You are from Quarter Two. Quarter Two. Yes, sir. I have to pray for you. There's somebody here. When it's time to pray, please, no matter what overflow you are in, um, I want to pray for you by myself. When they look at you, they will think you are pregnant, like very evidently pregnant but you are not pregnant this is i don't know what this is this thing is just protruding like this the power of god is coming on that person and that that demonic thing i curse it by the god of heaven he must let you go now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus mama can i pray for you in the name of jesus i'm praying for you ma that everything that wants to cut short your life number one i come against it in the name of jesus and then number two i'm praying for you it's time for you to reap from the fruit of your labor in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ who is this why is she here okay jennifer what's wrong with her huh she's not feeling fine 
Okay, we'll, we'll pray for the sick. Ah, we have to pray. Oh. Is she mad? She's just not. Okay. It's before that she was mad, but now it's not like that. She was mad before. Yes. When uh, it has been now uh, one, let's say eight months. Okay. When she came here, so she cannot talk and uh, other like that. She used to this, this means all the, when she's talking, so she no talk normally. Okay, we'll pray. We're going to minister to the sick. We have to, if not, we'll, we'll take all the night here. But we'll pray for her. Can she hear me? My dear, how are you? You can hear me? Yes. I will pray for you, eh? And Jesus will heal you. Because I'm already seeing this lady inside a coffin. With what I'm seeing, this lady will not cross this year. They will just say, survive by. But there is a God in heaven. Ah. Hallelujah. We have to pray. I hope they are not just coming out at random. Do we have... Huh? I didn't ask them to come out. I said, protocol, you people should be able to walk with the people so that we don't have... You are the one? Come. Where are you from? Paladin. Paladin. Yes. Place your hand on your stomach. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. You believe in the power of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Have you gone to the hospital? Yes, sir. I've done many scans. What did they tell you is there? Nothing. Nothing. And yet the stomach is growing and you're not pregnant. Yes. Are you married? About to, sir. About to marry. Is your husband here? Yes, sir. Husband, come. Where is he? The Lord wants to save a big, major marital problem now. Husband, sir, come. Thank you. Eh? Please don't be embarrassed. We love you. God just wants to save you. Very little things like this can tear marriage, not into two, into pieces. And want to, want to help them. Where are you coming from, sir? From Samar. What are you trusting God for? Healing, sir. And God provision for the word. Healing and God provision. Provision? Yes, sir. Uh, are you working? No, sir. Did you apply for a job? Yeah, I've been applying, sir. Because I'm looking, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing a letter. This is why I'm, I'm saying, I don't know. We are going to pray. This is your first time here? No, I've been coming. Okay, been, okay. I will pray for your wife first. Eh? If not, um, I hope I'm not, I'm not a prophet of doom, eh? but God is trying to save you from what will make you hate someone you are loving so much now. My dear, you love Jesus. Put your hand there. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, you see how this kind of demonic things are. The stomach is protruding and the machine is not even saying there's fibroid or something. At least if it says there's something, you know what to remove. The machine is showing that this woman is perfectly healthy, yet her stomach is protruding. If you don't understand now, you can put this innocent brother in trouble. You understand what I'm saying? You see how the devil works? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the holy spirit i decree and declare now watch the power of god ah, the power of god oh, this let me tell you the anointing is very powerful it's not for showmanship it's like a drug just enters your system and it will rubbish anything that is not god i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit madam let me tell you the truth you will not waste even if it's one day to be pregnant when it's time. I'm saying this by the Spirit of God. And this, I'm seeing like a black band tied around your stomach. I lose it right now. And I release you. I set you free from this. In the name of Jesus. My friend, I pray for you. Look at me, sir. You believe in Jesus? The budget I'm seeing is very much. You have not even gone... You have not gone near halfway the budget, eh? Don't be embarrassed. I'm not embarrassing you. You need a real miracle. This one is not just a destiny helper. You need a miracle. Because with what I'm seeing that you wrote as a budget, Kai, when is the wedding? 12th of October. 12th of October. God is faithful, eh? I will pray with you. There's a prophetic dimension of wealth. Truly there is. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit surprise this my dear brother more than enough for your wedding in the name of jesus christ and i declare be healed right now be healed completely 
in the name of Jesus be healed completely your name is Jennifer okay I'll pray with you come I'll just lay hands on you all this Jennifer I'll just lay hands I'm not getting any hold her collect the child please father in the name of Jesus Christ take away this reproach that I see in this family in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that the Lord is giving you a new beginning in Jesus name please come quickly in the name of Jesus come my dear may the Lord bless you and honor you come reproach is taken from your life in the name of Jesus the power of God is coming on one ushering lady it's an ushering lady I'm seeing a mighty deliverance reproach is living right now by the spirit whether inside or outside I'm seeing one ocean lady the power of God is coming upon her father in the name of Jesus let that miracle take away reproach in the name of Jesus Christ take away reproach you are Jennifer in the name of Jesus I pray for you in the name of Jesus I pray for you my dear my dear Hold our hands, two of you. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Because both of you need the same miracle. And God is giving you that miracle. He's terminating shame completely from your life. There is, I'm seeing a man here, you are a pastor. I know there are many pastors, I can presume, but who is a pastor here? Sir, please come. You are a pastor where, sir? Come again. I'm seeing, what do you have? I'm, I can't get, let him come. I'm seeing you You came from where, sir? Benin. Benin. I want to pray for you. Have your church. I want to pray for you. Please stand up, sir. Stand up. You are going to write a book. The Lord is going to anoint you and you will write a book. God will use that book to bless the body and honor you too. It's a grace that I'm praying for you. Number two, sir. I'm seeing the Lord strengthening your understanding. There's a teaching grace that God is releasing upon you. I don't know you and I'm praying for you and then i'm praying for you you will see the miraculous in a very strange way you may not lay hands on people like this but the spoken word as you are speaking you will see god begin to honor you and things begin to happen can i pray for you sir in the name of jesus i release you into these dimensions in the spirit and everything that has been said i command that it must come to pass for you by the supernatural power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus christ the Lord is releasing speed. Now, please hear this. I want to pray. I know that I always pray for this, but I'm about to pray right now. There is a very strong anointing and it's coming on people inside and outside. There are people who have compassed certain realms. God wants to shift them. Please help them. As that anointing comes, sometimes they are going to begin to run by the Spirit. Just run like this, inside or outside. Father, I'm the ah, my God. I decree and declare right now by the Spirit of God the grace that brings speed. Ten years in one. 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 By the Spirit of the living God, I command speed for you. Ten years in one. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I declare speed, 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 speed. Speed over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare it. You are not wasting your time. You are receiving speed. In the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ 
You are a pastor? Come. It's time to enter a new dimension. Step into a new level of grace. I shift you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Signs and wonders through your hands. In the name of Jesus, I shift you into a new realm in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing the anointing of the Holy Spirit going to the media stand. Just that media stand. I'm seeing, and it's still the same grace for speed. I'm seeing media stand. I'm seeing that grace. There are people entering strange realms of speed that God is bringing. I release you by this word of prophecy. Step into that dimension. In the name of Jesus, no power in existence will stop you. Hallelujah. My dear, come. This lady on red. Come, quickly, please. I'm seeing you laughing in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is saying I should release you to your seasons of laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak over you. And I declare whatever must happen in your life for laughter to break out. I'm declaring to you in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God. Let it happen to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are two ladies and three gentlemen. The real grace for the prophetic. The prophetic. I will do an impartation by the end of the Sabbath. Word. Two ladies and three men. A real grace. Real grace. The eyes. The eyes to see. Kalu sabra tu tu sabra. I quicken that grace, quicken that anointing by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Grace. Please don't think we are wasting our time. We are going to pray for the sick. My dear, come. This lady, God is visiting your family. Come and stand here. Where are your people? Where did they stay? Samaru. In Samaru here. Let me tell you, the month of September is a strange month of lifting for your family. You believe that? Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. See, let me teach you something. You see, the word of God is very powerful. Believe it. Believe it. Don't, don't sit arguing and saying, will God touch me? Will it change my life? No. God will more than surprise you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for this lady. And I decree and declare. May the Lord grant you this miracle in the name of Jesus. The Lord is touching someone at overflow two. Overflow two. And the Lord is saying he's taking reproach away. Taking reproach. I'm seeing the power of God come upon someone. Overflow two. In the name of Jesus Christ. Overflow two. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for the sick shortly. But I'm seeing... Wow. Wow. Usually, I would, not, I would not be the person to talk about these things, but when God does it, uh, we, are, we, we serve his purposes. I'm seeing a grace for miracle alert. This is why I kept quiet, because you will be surprised. That means you will see a lot inside a lot of monies. There was no transaction to have necessitated it. Now, God does not do this to sponsor laziness, but it's a prophetic dimension. This is what I just saw. I declare by the Spirit of God, Father, every once and again you do this in this house to bring glory to your name. I pray by the Spirit of the living God right now, in the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. For many of us, what will come upon you will, will take away financial pain, financial shame in the name of Jesus Christ. 
my friend what do you do come this man this what do you do a businessman sir. a businessman where in dandume sir come again dandume dandume katsina state katsina state yes in dandume i want to pray for you you love jesus yes sir don't let anybody don't be embarrassed eh? don't let anybody tell you to do anything diabolic for business favor yes, sir. you see what i'm saying does it make sense to you yes, sir. I yes hope sir. you're not embarrassed yes sir let, don't let anybody tell you that this is what he did that worked and you too you should do it and customers will come it's not true listen let me tell you paul can plant apollo can water is only god that brings increase i want to pray for you father what's your name sunday Naemeka, what's that? Is there a name like that? Naemeka. Naemeka, I'm hearing that name. I will pray for you, sir. But the Lord is bringing, I'm seeing the Lord bring a very strange miracle to the person with that name. In the name of Jesus, I take away stagnation from your business. I release you by the power of the Holy Spirit into abundance and into plenty in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing the hand of God coming on several people for ministry but listen now this doesn't mean that you just get up and go and start doing ministry but the call of God has been lingering on your life and it's time to answer that call I'm stretching my hands Lord I don't know where these people are Overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, online, in the main auditorium here. Father, anyone that your call up is upon his or her life, I'm praying, oh God, confirm that call right now. And let them know that it's not just their imagination. I declare by the anointing and by the Spirit of God, Draw them into their various callings, into the various mantles, the trainings, the seasons that they must enter in the realm of the spirit. To become mighty men and women of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. What's your name? Okay, I'll pray for you. In the name of Jesus, may God grant you speed. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, huh? I take away everything in your mind that will stop you from being productive. I shift you to experience the hand of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We'll pray for the sick now, but I'm seeing a ring in the spirit. Enter the hand of a lady and then the ring breaks almost immediately. Now you know that this is already, it may be symbolic of marriage, but a disastrous thing happening that just scatters it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't know who that person is, but I'm praying right now. That anything that will push you into marriage to only last months old, in the name of Jesus, I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing an anointing, my God. Come for direction. Especially geographic direction. The Lord is showing me that there are people who came here praying. They don't know exactly where to be based. This, is, this, this sounds funny. But the Lord, there is an anointing that is coming. Giving you clear direction in dreams visions prophetic intuitions some of you are saying lord should i stay should i go should i travel should i stay in the country out of the country i'm praying right now the grace for accurate direction in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you We're going to pray for the sick now and all kinds of 
situations that don't represent the counsel of God we have to pray and trust God we're going to do this very 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 fast I keep seeing something in this front row just these people in front I kept ignoring it but I don't know what I'm seeing I'm seeing something that God is showing me everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was lost restoration shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen there is somebody here the Lord is bringing an anointing into your life you are getting into oil listen, listen I'm serious now please listen to what I'm saying this can be a life and death prayer you see this spirit of death that is just sweeping around killing people like chickens all around someone will just say headache and fall down and die i pray for you in the name of jesus christ i forbid the earth from receiving your body i forbid the earth from receiving your body and i declare every spirit of kidnapping whether in zaria here kaduna that will just allow wicked people to come and kidnap innocent people. We, we cause that spirit and we bring the perpetrators under judgment. Two more prayer points were done. The dimension of the demonstration of the spirit, sign, wonders miracles the gifts of the spirit i call that dimension whatever dimension is missing in your life i speak to you please hear me especially if you are in ministry right now and here tonight step into that dimension dreams visions the prophetic the gifts of the spirit being activated in the name of jesus christ I pray for everyone who is weary, you are tired. Life has just wrestled with your spiritual fervency. And it's as though you are about to give up. It's like the grace to continue is not there. By the Spirit of God, I supply fresh fire for the journey. Every leader here, whether a campus leader, prayer group leader, Bible study leader, church pastor, whatever kind of group, I pray for you. The dimension of grace that will keep the fire in your groups, your fellowship burning, I supply that grace upon you now. We prophesy over Zaria. We speak to the spiritual borders of this city to fight anyone coming into this city to cause trouble or cause confusion in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you. Every request and every issue that was the reason why you came here, I agree with you in the name of Jesus that the next time you come here it will be to testify. Jesus and any man who says over his dead body for you to rise may their prayer be answered this night thank you Jesus let me pray the last prayer of restoration I just sense it in my spirit whatever has left your life that should not have left whether it's money you lost money you lost friends you lost valuable relationships in the name of Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God 
I call it back into your life now. I call it back into your life now. Praise the Lord. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, we are late, but we cannot close this meeting without giving me an opportunity to hand my life totally to Jesus. Please, let's minimize movement. This for me, I believe, truly without exaggeration, is the greatest miracle. I know that there are people here under the sound of my voice who are saying, Apostle, I want to make my ways right with Jesus. You are here, overflow one, two, three, four. I want to give you an opportunity in two minutes. Please run, overflow three now. You can just move to your projector stand and overflow four because of time. But if you are here, overflow one, two, two B, and then online, please make your way here quickly. Let's celebrate them as they come. You're saying, Apostle, I want to win that war. My friend, keep stretching your leg carefully, eh? You don't have to, yes, you, the man with the crutch. Keep coming quickly, please. If there are people coming from outside, please clear the way for them so that they hurry up. Clear the way very quickly for them. Hallelujah. You're joining them. Please join them quickly. I believe there are still more people. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you and telling you to not let this meeting. The Bible says it's the goodness of God that calls men to repentance. Praise the Lord. If you're joining them, come, come quickly. Now, I salute every one of you. Thank you so much for making this decision. For those making this decision online, we salute you. Very quickly, I will request that you lift your right hand and please pray after me. Do it truthfully and passionately. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, if you're joining them, please join quickly. Please clear the way for them. Say after me, Lord Jesus, tonight, I declare that I cannot help myself. I declare that I believe that you are my savior, you are my king, you are my Lord. Tonight, I receive by faith the abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness, and I declare that I reign in this life from today and forever i have eternal life i'm a child of god forward ever and backward never amen please keep those hands lifted father we thank you the bible declares that whosoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away thank you for bringing this one so god to make their declaration we declare according to the authority of scripture that a new life begins for them tonight a life of victory a life of grace in the name of Jesus we thank you because they will go from glory to glory and from strength to strength in Jesus name I pray amen and amen thank you now there's a gentleman waving his hands at the back please all of you just follow the gentleman in concert and there will be a group of people to receive you very quickly thank you for your patience Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.